A welcome in here to Hyde Stadium as the Pier Trappers take on the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks for the first time this season. A Lewis versus Clark division matchup 
here from Hyde in the first three of this weekend series. Here on Friday, June 25th, the Whiskey Jacks and Trappers take each other on for a total of three games this weekend on Friday, Saturday, and rounding out the weekend series with a Sunday series finale. The Trappers have struggled recently, not only at home, but in games overall. They're 5-5 five and five here at Hyde Stadium. And after going ahead 6-5 and five on the season, they've since dropped 11 of their last 13 contests to fall to 8-16 and 16 on the year. But talking to Coach May last night for the Trappers, new opponent, new season. The goal is to reset and find a different way into this season. And that starts by taking on an opponent they hadn't se haven't seen before in the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. The Whiskey Jacks coming off a two-game series sweep of the Fremont Moo. They now sit at 11-13 and 13 on the season. They've won three in a row, sit fourth place in the Lewis Division standings. Currently in Pierce, South Dakota, 79 degrees and cloudy with a chance of rain. Could be watching for that as the night progresses here from Hyde Stadium in the capital of South Dakota. Taking a look at the starting lineups, for, first for the visiting Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, they'll lead things off with the shortstop, number 25, Dean Bittner. Batting second, the second baseman, number 11, Ethan Sitzman. Batting third, the designated hitter, number 28, Caleb McDowell. Batting fourth, the left fielder, number 18, Owen Viano. Batting fifth, the catcher, number 22, Rhett Stein. Batting sixth, the first baseman, number three, Nolan Lingley. Batting seventh, the third baseman, number 26, Dylan McKee. Batting eighth, the right fielder, number 21, Houston Fogelstrom. And batting ninth, the left fielder, number six, in Cameron Daigle. Pitching for the Whiskey Jacks will be number 15 in Jake Anderson. Starting lineup for the Pier Trappers. They'll lead things off with the right fielder, number 33, Caden Cardoso. The shortstop, number 22, Patrick Connor, bats second. Batting third, the center fielder, number six, Eric Mast. Batting fourth, the first baseman, number 28, Joey Bramante. Batting fifth, the second baseman, number 17, Ty Stouse. Batting sixth, the Catcher, number 35, Nicholas Strong. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, number 23, Brock Reinhardt. Batting eighth, the left fielder, number 20, Cole Yancey. And batting ninth, the third baseman, number three, Braden Cordes. Pitching for the Pier Trappers tonight will be number 15 in Ryan Cross. Cross in four starts this season. Has pitched well, has a 4.28 ERA, which is enough for top in the team in the minimum innings pitch requirement. However, offensive run support hasn't been there. Four crosses starts, he is 0-3 on the season. On the other side, on the mound for the Whiskey Jacks, Jake Anderson has appeared in six games. Three of them starts as a 1-2 record with a 3.11 ERA entering tonight's ballgame. Trappers wearing navy blue uniforms, navy blue caps with white piping and gold lettering, gold brims on the caps with a P for pier across the front with white pants. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks wearing gray pants, light blue uniforms with navy blue sleeves, white word mark of Grand Forks across the front with white numbers on the back. They wear light blue caps as well with their alternate bird logo on the bill of the cap. We'll take a quick break for the national anthem here from Hyde Stadium and be back for first pitch between the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks and the Pier Trappers.
Well, the national anthem has been sung, and that means it's time to play ball here from Hyde Stadium. The Pier Trappers and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks about to get underway here from the capital of South Dakota. Second time, excuse me, the first time that the Whiskey Jacks have played in the state of South Dakota. They did play against the Sioux Falls Sunfish at their home stadium this season in Grand Forks. They were supposed to play in Sioux Falls, but due to a scheduling conflict, had to play their games against the Sunfish in Carroll, Iowa. So yet to play a baseball game in South Dakota, 25 games into the season, Wheat City will finally play in their neighbors to the south. We'll take a look at the defensive lineup for the Pier Trappers in the batting order one more time for the Whiskey Jacks before we get underway. Defensively for the Trappers, they'll have Yancey in left field, Mast in center, Cardoso in right, Cordes at third, Connor at short, Staus at second, Bramante at first, Cross on the mound with Strong behind the plate as the Trappers have a team huddle before hit taking off to their defensive positions. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks will line up with the shortstop Bittner leading things off, then the second baseman Sitzman, the DH McDowell, the left fielder Viano, the catcher Stein, the first baseman Lingley, the third baseman McKee, the right fielder Fogelstrom, and the left fielder Daigle. Pitching for the Whiskey Jacks, and we'll start in the bottom of the first inning will be Jake Anderson. So warming up for the Pier Trappers is number 15 in Ryan Cross, the Spokane Falls Community College Bigfoot and the native of Spokane, Washington. In four appearances this season, all of them being starts, has an 0-3 record with a 4.28 ERA. 21 innings pitched, allowed 20 hits, 16 runs, 10 of them earned, has walked 14, striking out 25. His last appearance against the Sabre Dogs pitched last Friday. Pitched six innings, allowing six hits, four runs, all of them earned. Walked four, struck out four. Now, I'll make sense of this comparison in a moment, but I've made a couple comparisons to cross with DeGrom, and not by skill of any mean I'm not comparing to Jacob DeGrom himself, but in the fact that there are great starts by Ryan Cross that he simply does not get the run support for that made him fall to 0-3 on the season. So Cross will lead things off against Bittner, Sitzman, and McDowell. Bittner batting 500 on the season, Sitzman batting 239, and McDowell batting 287. It's the first game of the season between the Wheat, Wheat City Whiskey Jacks and the Pier Trappers. Whiskey Jacks will make another trip here to Hyde Stadium following this series, as well as the Trappers making a trip up north to Grand Forks. Quick meeting at the mound between Strong and Cross before we get things underway. Again, Whiskey Jacks in gray pants. They're going to use black batting helmets, light blue uniforms with navy blue piping on the sides, white word mark that says Grand Forks across the front with white numbers on the back. Trappers in white pants, navy uniforms, gold lettering, white piping. Navy hats with gold brims. The wind up and pitch, first pitch will go high for a ball. So one ball, no strikes to start off the ball game. The wind up and pitch by Cross, that one will run inside for ball two, outside for ball two. So a 2-0 Cross still looking for the first strike. Pitch and a high pop-up heading into the middle infield. Chasing after it's Connor. Connor backs up towards center. Stumbles, holds on to the baseball. Falling down, but Patrick Connor getting away with it on the pop-out to short. First pitch five minutes earlier than scheduled at 7 o'clock. So one out in the inning will bring up Ethan Sitzman. Sitzman, the second baseman, bats 0 for 4, went 0 for 4 yesterday against the Fremont move. First pitch will catch the strike zone for strike number one. Umpires today, Alex Shoemaker behind the plate with Chad Williams in the field. Shoemaker has been known to have very delayed strike calls this entire season. 
0-1. The windup and pitch by Cross on the outside part of the plate. Four ball one. We'll even the count at one ball, one strike. Wind up and pitch from Cross. A line drive heading to left field. That will drop for a base hit in front of Cole Yancey. And the first base hit of the ball game belongs to Ethan Sitzman. Runner on for the Whiskey Jacks. It'll bring up McDowell, the designated hitter. Went one for four yesterday. Bats 287 on the season. McDowell, the Grandview University Viking at a South Junction, Utah. Runner at first for the Whiskey Jacks. Wind up and pitch will miss for ball one. So one ball, no strikes. All 12 teams in the Expedition League playing today. Pickoff attempt, but back in safely is Sitzman. Whiskey Jacks having been relocated for this season from their home in Brandon, Manitoba. Here comes the 1-0. A pitch will miss low and outside, ball two. Because of the border restrictions with Canada due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Whiskey Jacks were forced to relocate to Craft Field in Grand Forks, North Dakota. 2-0, swung on, hit to right field, chasing after it is Cardoso. Cardoso reaches up and makes the catch for out number two. So McDowell flies out to right. Bringing up Owen Viano. Viano got a day off in yesterday's contest against Fremont. Played in game one, however, going two for four with two RBIs, striking out twice. First pitch will catch the center of the strike zone going right down Main Street for strike number one. However, the Whiskey Jacks this season, new uniforms printed that say Grand Forks across the front to honor the city that th is hosting them for this summer. Pitch will run outside. Strong loses the baseball and advancing to second and now third as it rolls all the way to the dugout and coming home, but Strong will pick it up and threaten Sitzman back to third. So the count will run even and now going to first base is Owen Viano. So instead, Sitzman is going to have to go all the way back to third as Viano was hit by the pitch. So it will put runners on first and second. It brings up Rhett Stein, two for two yesterday. Runners at first and second. Pitch will go down the center of the plate for a strike. So no balls, one strike to Stein. A wind up and pitch by Cross will go low, gets away from Strong, but threatens both runners back, keeping it in front. The set of umpires also with us yesterday as the Trappers took on the Sioux Falls Sunfish. That was a one-game set here from Hyde Stadium. 1-1, one, one, swung on and missed for strike number two. Pops in front of the glove of Strong for strike two. One ball, two strikes. So Sitzman at second base, Viano at first. Whiskey Jacks trying to strike here in the first. Pitch by Cross will catch the strike zone for strike number three. Stein goes down looking, and that ends the first inning for Wheat City. Top of the order for the Trappers and Cardoso, Connor and Mass do up when we return for the Trappers half of the first inning here on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams.
Hey, it's the old top Gator here with Gator's Pizza Pasta Subs in the North Ridge Plaza. Gator's is known for top quality food. Now you can have our food selections delivered right to your front door using DoorDash. That's right, now you have four ways that you can get great Gator's food. Dine in, carry out, curbside pickup, and now delivery through DoorDash. Gator's has been serving the Pier area and now Trapper's baseball fans since 1987. Gator's Pizza Pasta Subs in the North Ridge Plaza. Back here for the bottom of the first inning, we'll take you through the defensive lineup for Wheat City, as well as the batting order for the Pier Trappers. For Wheat City, they'll go with Viano in left, Daigle in center, Fogelstrom in right, McKee at third, Bittner at short, Sitzman at second, Lingley at first, Anderson on the mound, and Stein behind the plate. Trappers batting order will have the right fielder Cardoso leading off, then the shortstop Connor, the center fielder Mast, the first baseman Bramante, the second baseman, Staus, the catcher, Strong, the D.H. Reinhardt, the left fielder, Yancey, and the third baseman in Braden Cordes rounding things out. Starting pitcher for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks in Jake Anderson in six start appearances has gotten three starts as a one and two record with a 3.11 ERA. In 17 and a third innings pitched, he's allowed 19 hits, 12 runs, six of them earned has walked 17 and struck out 15, so a higher walk to strikeout ratio. His last appearance was last Friday, excuse me, back on June 20th. So that was last Sunday against the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Pitched a loss, only pitched in one and a third innings, allowed three hits, nine runs, only three of them earned, however. Walked four and struck out three. So leading things off for the Trappers will be Caden Cardoso. Cardoso the first Trapper to take on Anderson. So Cardoso will lead things off. He bats 194 on the year, has really taken control of his appearance as the leadoff batter. First pitch will go on the outside part of the plate for ball number one. Cardoso was struggling towards the 3-4 hole, but since being in the leadoff spot, he's somewhat gotten back to form that we saw at the beginning of the season as a pitch will go low, two balls, no strikes. Yesterday in the bottom of the ninth inning, Cardoso hit a deep fly ball to right field that hit just before the warning track. It ended up being an air by the Sunfish right fielder that ended up scoring two runs for the Trappers and made it a one-run ball game. 2-0 goes high but catches letters, puts the count to two balls and one strike. One of the cloudier days we've had here from Pierre. Wind on the center field flag seems non-existent, but looking at some of the other flags out on Sioux Avenue down the over the right field walls, a swing and a miss by Cardoso will run the count to two and two. Those are flying out to left field, but no wind on the outfield flag here at Hyde Stadium. Two balls, two strikes to Cardoso. Connor and Mast also do up this inning. Wind up and pitch by Anderson on a pitch low. Kicks up some dirt. Count will run full to Cardoso. Three balls and two strikes. Two other games underway in the Expedition League. The Mining City Tommyknockers and Badlands Big Sticks facing off as well as the Sioux Falls Sunfish and Hastings Sodbusters. 3-2 will run inside. Cardoso jumps out of the way. It will be a leadoff walk for the Trapper right fielder, Caden Cardoso. So the Trappers get a runner on here in the bottom of the first inning. Trying to score here and break the scoreless tie. Bottom one, Trappers nothing and the Whiskey Jacks nothing. Patrick Connors steps up. The shortstop went one for four yesterday with a walk and a strikeout. Anderson fires on a pitch on the outside part of the plate, but it catches plate for strike one.
the no balls one strike with Cardoso standing at first base. Anderson waits, picks and fires on a swing and a line drive hit to right field. That drops for a base hit. Cardoso will go to second. The Trappers play station to station. And the first base hit of the ball game belongs to the shortstop Patrick Connor for the Trappers. Trappers are in business with two runners on and nobody out with Eric Mast coming to the plate. Mast has 14 base hits this season. Five of them for extra bases, three doubles, a triple, and a home run. Anderson kicks and fires first pitch to Mast, who will run on the inside part of the plate. Catching strike zone for strike number one. Mass, the native of Spokane, Washington, attends Big Bend Community College. So the 0-1 runners on first and second. Cardoso doing a small shuffle over at second base. Anderson will kick and fire on the 0-1. A high pop fly heading to left field. Back goes Viano. Viano will reach up and make the catch. Cardoso thought about breaking for third, but will back up. Out number one of the inning is a fly out to left by Eric Mast. It brings up Joey Bramante. Bramante yesterday, or two games ago, went one for three, getting a day off yesterday. Takes the first pitch for a ball. No balls, one strike. The pitch will run high and inside, even though they count at one and one. Now I was down in the dugout before the game and I was talking to a few of the players and one guy who wanted to talk to me and was adamant about it was Joey Bramante. Pitch will be grounded off to the third base side of foul ball as the ball will trickle into the Wheat City dugout. And he had one simple request and it was that I give a shout out on the stream to Boston Sand and Gravel. So here's your shout out, Boston Sand and Gravel from the Trapper Zone, Joey Bramante. Steps out of the box. Is Bramante. Of course, Bramante, a Massachusetts native out of North Andover, Massachusetts, attending the University of Maine. Here comes the one, two, swung on and chopped foul into the screen. Runners at first and second for the Trappers with one away here in the bottom of the first. Connor sits at first, Cardoso at second. Anderson checks over at Cardoso. Looks back at Bramante, kicks and fires a swing and a miss as Bramante goes down on strikes. It brings up Ty Staus, made his debut for the Trappers yesterday. Bats from the left-handed batter's box, throws with his right hand. The Southeast Missouri State Red Hawk calls Wildwood, Missouri his hometown. Anderson steps off the mound to check over on Cardoso, but will tr retreat back to first base safely. Wind up and pitch, swung on and missed by Staus for strike number one. After two runners reach, Cardoso via the walk and Connor via the base hit, Mass and Bramante both go out. Mass by a fly out to left, Bramante by the strikeout swinging. 0-1 catches the outside part of the plate as Staus will fall behind, no balls, two strikes. O 
O2 on the way, goes high and outside for ball one. Anderson didn't have a great outing in his last appearance against the Sunfish. However, only three of those runs were earned runs. So the one-two, check over at Cardoso at second base. Steps off the mound is Anderson, no throw over to second, however. Anderson kicks and fires on the one-two, swung on. And caught by, that was a very delayed strike call. Staus is saying he got a piece of it and now it will be May coming over to talk about it and now a meeting between the umpires in the center of the field. Maybe that it was a drop third strike and have a quick conversation. And now an explanation to Monterio May. Cardoso still standing at second base. The Trappers have not taken the field defensively and they're gonna call him out on the strikeout swinging. So Anderson strikes out two this inning. We'll head to the third with the Whiskey Jacks trying to strike first in this ball game. Dan O's Marine is a proud partner of Pier Trappers Baseball. Located at 320 St. Charles Street, Dan O's provides service on your boat to get you back out on the water in the dog days of summer. Give them a call at 605-224 6612. That's Dano's Marine at 605 224 6612. Any water, any problem, Dano's Marine. Wow, Shell's Quick Stop is the place to go for a variety of food, drinks, fishing tackle, and more. Hungry? Come on down for breakfast pizza, burritos, biscuits and gravy, soup, salad, and wraps. Thirsty? Try their hot and cold espresso drinks, lattes, frappuccinos, and milkshakes from the drive-up window. Heading down to the water? Stop by to pick up minnows, crawlers, and leeches to secure the big bites. All of it's down at Shell's at 621 West Sioux Avenue. Back for the top of the second inning here on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks getting out of danger with a runner in scoring position and nobody out for the Trappers with a fly out to left and two consecutive strikeout swingings. Due up for the Whiskey Jacks this inning is the 6, 7, 8 in Lingley, McKee, and Fogelstrom. In the first inning, Ryan Cross, the pitcher for the Pier Trappers, allowed one base hit and a hit by pitch, put runners at first and second with two away, but a strikeout looking to Rhett Stein ended that inning. So leading things off will be no Nolan Lingley, the first baseman for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Lingley, two for three yesterday against the Fremont Moo. The Moo have been on a slide as of recently, having lost five in a row. Pitch inside, catches the strike zone for strike number one from Cross to Lingley. Pitch low, appeal down to the field umpire, no swing. He'll even the count at one and one. Fairly even looked like Lingley took the bat off his shoulders, let alone went around. 1-1, one, one, high and inside. Two balls, one strike now to Lingley. Lingley, the first baseman for the Whiskey Jacks, a native of Tracy, California. Swing and a miss for strike number two. A Division I talent for the Whiskey Jacks playing for the Pepperdine Wave. Lingley this season has five base hits, two of them for extra bases, including one yesterday, both of them doubles. Swing and a miss by Lingley. 
as he'll go down on strike, second punch out of the day for Ryan Cross. So it'll bring up Dylan McGee. First pitch will run inside, catching the strike zone. No balls and one strike. So 0-1 oh pitch will go low. Evens the count at 0-2 oh as the pitch will catch the strike zone. McKee. Wearing number 26 this season as he will strike out swinging a three pitch strikeout. Strikeout number three of the day for Ryan Cross and strikeout number two of the inning. It'll bring up number 21, Houston Fogelstrom, the right fielder for the Whiskey Jacks. The native of Omaha, Nebraska, plays his college ball for the Northeast Community College Hawks. First pitch will miss outside for ball one. So a 1-0 count, the pitch from Cross catches the strike zone on the outside part of the plate, evens the count at one and one, two away in the inning. One-one, the pitch from Cross swung on and missed by Fogelstrom on a pitch in the dirt, one ball, two strikes. And after a somewhat shaky first inning for Cross has settled in so far here in the second. Wind up and pitch by Cross. Catches the strike zone, strike number three. Ryan Cross strikes out the side. Second time struck out looking a Whiskey Jack batter as Lingley, McKee, and Fogelstrom all go down on strikes. We'll be back for the bottom of the second. It will be the six, seven, eight for the Trappers due up when we come back. The Governor's Inn is the exclusive motel partner of the Pier Trappers. Check out the special Trapper's Rate for your visit to Pier and Hyde Stadium this summer. Call 605-224-4200 directly to get the Trapper's Rate. With free wireless internet, a deluxe breakfast, and an indoor pool and hot tub, there's no reason not to stop at the Governor's Inn. Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry are your homes for everything clothing in the Capital Area. Since 2010, Total Beauty has offered great customer service and competitive prices. Next door at Speedway Laundry, they have you covered for a fast, convenient way to wash and dry your clothes and other household items including king-size comforters. Visit them at 111 First Street in Fort Pier. Back for the bottom of the second inning here on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler channels. After Ryan Cross strikes out the side in the top half of the inning, it will bring up Strong, Reinhardt, and Yancey. Strong got the day off yesterday, two days ago. Went one for three against the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Sunfish currently underway against the Hastings Sodbusters in the bottom of the third from Karis Park in Sioux Falls have a one to nothing lead. It was an interesting night last night as the Sunfish broadcaster David Coyer and myself teamed up on the broadcast of yesterday's game. Since then, we've remained in touch. He just sent me a message in between innings of his game that he's now said trappers when he's meant to say sodbusters twice in that ball game. Just shows when you play a team 12 times in a row, you really get used to that roster. So leading things off here it will be Nick Strong. First pitch to Strong on a fastball by Anderson will miss. Pitch will catch the strike zone. To even the count is Strong, one ball and one strike. The fastball by Anderson
on a pitch that goes low for 2-1. An off-speed pitch from Anderson, but the fastball that by Anderson, you can tell when he has it, it's one of the faster fastballs that the Trappers have seen so far this year. So the 2-1 on the way to Strong. Hit over to third, gets over the glove of the third baseman, McKee, into left field, a base hit for Strong. So it'll bring up Brock Reinhardt, the designated hitter. Reinhardt yesterday going one for three. Has gotten a hit in two consecutive games, trying to make it a hitting streak by hitting in his third consecutive game. First pitch will be swung on and fouled into the screen for strike number one. Game time was five minutes earlier than scheduled. Seven o'clock first pitch, 7.05 scheduled start time. Standing at first is Strong with nobody away and Reinhardt at the dish. The 0-1 dropped by Stein. Staying at first base will be Strong. Will you end the count at 1-1? One and one? Elsewhere in the Expedition League, the Mining City Tommyknockers hold a 2-1 lead over the Badlands. Big Sticks bottom two there. Fastball high and away. Four ball two, two balls and one strike. The Surris Valley Sabredogs and the Fremont Moo. One of the better series that we've seen so far this season. The Moo have been on a slide, but the Sabredogs have been hot. Been looking to that series all season as another pitch will go high. Three balls and one strike to the batter in Reinhardt. And in the top of the first, the game hasn't disappointed. The Fremont Moo, who are currently still undefeated at home, are now down three to nothing in the top of the first inning to the Sabre Dogs. Three one, the windup and pitch by Anderson will catch the strike zone on the inside part of the plate. For strike number two, as the count runs full to the DH in Reinhardt. Reinhardt, the South Dakota State Jackrabbit, out of Woodbury, Minnesota. Three two, pitch goes high and it's a. Full count walk that will advance strong over to second base. Second walk surrendered by Jake Anderson. So the Trappers mirroring their first inning with getting the first two runners aboard via a single and a walk. It's mirrored from the order it was in the first inning with a single first, then a walk. But it brings up Cole Yancey as the Trappers will finally look to convert with a runner in scoring position. Still nobody away. Anderson looks in, steps back. Check over at Strong, who's dancing at second base. The kick and fire a swing and a miss by Yancey for strike number one. Yancey a day off yesterday in game two of the Sioux Falls series. Went one for four with two RBIs, walked once, struck out once. Still dancing at second is strong. The 0-1 showing bunt goes high as Yancey pulls back to even the count at one and one. So a one and one count. Time will be called by Yancey. So a one one. Runners at first and second. Reinhardt at first, strong at second base. A long look over at strong by Anderson. The kick and fire on the one one. High and tight. Two balls, one strike. Trappers with two base hits, one in both innings. They also walked once in each the first and second innings. A large crowd for the Pier Trappers, especially in that general admission area. A lot of children in the crowd. 
today. 2-1. Pitch will go low. Three balls and one strike to Cole Yancey. Of course, the large attendance of the children of the Capital Area could be due to the Zuper Stars, a between-inning traveling show, making it stop here at Hyde Stadium tonight. 3-1 on the way. Dribble Dribbler up to third, picking it up is McKee. McKee fires on the first, a tough play, but he gets it done. Both runners will advance for the Trappers, one away in the inning. So a 5-3 ground up by Cole Yancey advances Reinhardt to second base and strong over to third, and Braden Cordes will have a huge opportunity for an RBI. Runners at second and third for the Trappers. Cordes carried a six-game hitting streak into yesterday's ball game, had it snapped going 0 for 4. First pitch taken for a ball. Cooler day today in Pier from past home games. Swing and a miss by Cordes on a swinging over the baseball for strike one. One ball, one strike. 79 degrees today compared to yesterday's ball game, which was a 91 degree first pitch. One ball, one strike. Kicks and fires on a pitch that goes high. Two balls and one strike. So the 2-1, the windup and pitch by Anderson, swung on and missed by Cordes. That's two swing and miss by Braden Cordes in this at bat. Has not taken a strike. As I've been doing the past few games, the foul ball will head back into the screen on the welcome to Hyde Stadium sign and trickle into the crowd. Count remains two and two. We'll give you some updates from around the different playoffs in the summer months of 2021, including the College World Series, which is currently underway. After the 2-2 to Cordes, he chops one up the third base side, hooks foul, count remains two and two. In the College World Series, Mississippi State and Texas. Texas defeating Virginia in yesterday's contest to advance to the final four, but they have to beat Mississippi State twice if they wanna make it into the final series. If Mississippi State wins tonight, they'll be in that final best of three series. Pitch will catch the, will miss the strike zone. Th so that makes it three balls and two strikes. So a full count to Braden Cordes with runners at second and third for the Trappers. Big payoff pitch coming from Jake Anderson. A wind up and deal, pitch goes high, ball four, and that will bring up the top of the order for the Trappers, third walk surrendered by Anderson. Time will be called as Stein, the catcher, will come to out to talk with his pitcher in Jake Anderson. Cardoso will come up. He Drew a walk in his last plate appearance, still looking for his first official at bat. Tip off just occurring in Milwaukee between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Atlanta Hawks. Super early as the Bucks only lead four to two. And in the NHL playoffs, the New York Islanders and Tampa Bay Lightning in game seven at the Amelie Arena in Tampa, Florida. Tied at zero with eight minutes to go in the first period. Bases are loaded. 
first pitch to Cardoso will miss low for a ball. Now Anderson, three balls away from walking in the first run of the ball game. Time will be called by the field umpire as a ball will trickle into the field. And I think that was from an area of grass down the right field line called the Prairie here at Hyde Stadium. Kids throwing a baseball back and forth and one got away. So one ball, no strikes to Caden Cardoso. Anderson steps back, kicks and fires a big swing and a miss by Cardoso. He was looking to send one over the wall. We'll even the count at one ball, one strike. Cardoso this season has hit two home runs. Was a few feet shy of his third last night. 1-1. One, one. Pitch will catch the inside part of the plate for strike number two. Now, although a hit here would be important, it is not the end of the world for the Trappers as they still have another out to work with. This would only take away a potential sacrifice situation. So one ball, two strikes. Cardoso flips the bat up over his shoulders. One, two, swung on, to hit to left field. Heading back is Viano and Daigle that will one hop off the wall. Back to back, crossing home is Strong and Reinhardt. On his horse, heading home is Braden Cordes and a three RBI bases clearing double for Caden Cardoso gets the Trappers on the board first. And that's exactly what the Trappers needed as Cardoso delivers with a big base hit to left center field. Ball dropped in front of Viano and Daigle, the left fielder and center fielder for the Whiskey Jacks, as they find themselves down in a 3 0 hole off the double by Caden Cardoso as it brings up Patrick Connor. Connor today, one for one, with a single back in the first inning. Wind up and pitch by Anderson. Will catch the inside part of the strike zone, strike number one. So for Caden Cardoso, had two RBIs heading into today's game. Both of them were his solo home runs. We'll get three more off a three RBI double as a pitch will run inside, evening the count at one and one to Patrick Connor. So he increases his RBIs by 150% with one swing of the bat. One, one, half-hearted swing by Connor for strike number two. So one ball, two strikes. Cardoso stands at second. Connor, the batter, still only one away here in the bottom of the second. Pitch will go high, evening the count at two balls, two strikes as Anderson trying to get out of this inning. A couple of Whiskey Jacks walking down the left field line towards the Whiskey Jacks bullpen. That looks like number 12, Dylan Cooster. Two, two pitch goes high and a full count out of Patrick Connor as he's worked himself back in this count. Earlier today from the College World Series, the Vanderbilt Commodores defeated the NC State Wolfpack by a final score of three to one. They will now go to a game seven of that bracket. Three, two, fouled off into the Wheat City bullpen. Keeps the count full, three, two. Vanderbilt and NC State will play one more time to decide who goes to that best of three series for the 2021 Division I National Championship. Three-two payoff pitch to Patrick Connor. 
Cardoso at second base. The 3-2 swung on and tipped off. Heading towards the Trapper's dugout. Count remains full. Will trickle towards the line. Bramante, the in-the-hole batter, will come out to receive it. So three balls, two strikes. Patrick Connor, who's one for one, the batter. Three across this inning already for the Trappers off the three RBI double by Caden Cardoso, who still stands at second. Payoff pitch one more time from Anderson. Pitch goes high, ball four. It's the fourth walk surrendered by Anderson so far today. Third walk of the inning as well. So it will bring up Eric Mast. He's 0 for 1 today after flying out to left field. A big start for the Pier Trappers as it's looking up in their direction. Runners at first and second, still only one away in the inning. That one out recorded was a ground out to third by Cole Yancey that advanced runners Two runners into scoring position. Both those runs ended up coming around to score. First pitch well outside for ball one. It seems like Anderson might be losing some confidence. So one ball, no strikes. Connor at first, Cardoso at second. Similar story to how it was in the first inning. Mast in that situation flew out to left as he rips a ball into right field. That drops in front of Fogelstrom. Cardoso will hit the brakes at third, but not seeing it as Patrick Connor. There are two trappers at the same base. And now Cardoso will be tagged out between third and home, taking second on the opportunity is Eric Mast and a base running blunder by Patrick Connor. The bases would have been loaded. Mast will single, advance to second on the throw. Connor advances to second due to the single on Mast. Will advance to third on the throw while Cardoso will advance to third off the base hit and be out between third and home. So a gaff by the Trappers stopped them from scoring another run, but now two runners in scoring position for Joey Bramante. Connor did not see the stop sign as he head to, went to third where Cardoso was already standing. First pitch will be chopped down the third baseline for strike number one. Three to nothing Trappers. Bottom of the second inning, two away. The 0-1 will plunk Joey Bramante right in the shoulder as he'll take off his shoulder pad. Toss his bat away and head on over to first base for the Ty Staus at bat. It'll bring up Staus who's 0 for 1 today. He struck out swinging to end the Trappers first. We'll try to avoid the same fate with the bases loaded for the second time this inning for the Trappers. First time was a three RBI double by Cardoso. First pitch will miss low for ball one. Anderson still being left to his own devices. Definitely not the start that he wanted against the Pier Trappers, letting up a three RBI single with a chance for more as the pitch will run outside. Two balls, two no strikes. Two balls away from walking in the fourth run of the ball game and of the inning. Anderson entered today's ball game with a 17 to 15 walk to strikeout ratio. That has now grown to a 21 to 17 walk to strikeout ratio. Pitch will go outside and at 3-0 count, Anderson in danger of walking in a run and putting the fourth run on the scoreboard for the Pier Trappers. A 
And ball four will head outside for Staus. Another run comes home for the Trappers as Staus will be walked on four pitches. It's four to nothing, Trappers. Time will be called. There will be a mound visit between head coach of the Whiskey Jacks in Robbie Laughlin and his pitcher. He will call off the bullpen, the bullpen arm. It looks like number 12 in the bullpen and Dylan Cooster will be called off. And a quick meeting at the mound. The entire infield is in, but standing behind the mound within earshot of the conversation. Base is still loaded. Fifth walk of the ball game for Anderson in the fourth of the inning. Advancing to second is Joey Bramante. Mast will get to third. Connor comes home. So the Trappers have now batted around. Strong, who led off the second inning, will now bat again. He's singled against Jake Anderson, and he steps in for round two. Four to nothing, Trappers, and a four-run inning. Trappers last scored four in an inning two days ago in Sioux Falls when they put up an eight run sixth. Strong steps in one for one today, singling earlier this inning. A swing and a miss by Strong for strike number one. So no balls, one strike to Strong. Bases remain loaded and two outs. Whiskey Jacks just uh, out away from stopping the bleeding. Oh, one, a high pop fly heading towards the right side and will head out of play. Strike number two. Oh, no balls, two strikes to Strong. Trying to extend the Trapper inning. Wind up and pitch by Anderson, goes high, no swing by Strong, ball one. So now a one-two count Strong, trying to drive in a few more runs for the Trappers. One-two. High and tight, strong, jumps out of the way of a pitch. Two balls, two strikes, count goes even. Strong came into today's game batting 182. 2-2 two -two will go low, kicking up some chalk from the left-handed batter's box. Count will run full, three balls, two strikes. Strong singled, came around to score on the Cardoso three RBI double in the second inning. We're still here in the second inning. Bases still loaded. Full count, everyone runs. A swing and a miss by Nick Strong will end the inning. So a strikeout ends the frame. The Trappers, however, score four runs. They walked four. Four times in the inning, getting three base hits. The Trappers at the end of two innings lead four to nothing over the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. We'll be back for the top of the third as the Whiskey Jacks look to crawl back into this ball game in any way they can when we come back. You don't need an illness to need a doctor. You don't need to feel sick to feel better. You don't need to be unwell to get well. What you do need is a primary care provider at Sanford Health. Better health care starts with regular wellness visits and a familiar face who knows you, your concerns, and your goals. We're here before you need us. We're here when you need us. We're here after you need us. We're here for you. Find your primary care provider at SanfordHealth.org today.
Top of the third inning about to get underway here from Pierce, South Dakota. It's the Trappers four and the Whiskey Jacks nothing. Couple sponsors we'd like to thank for the 2021 Pierce Trappers baseball season before we get underway, including Floyd's Truck Center, Graham Tire, Guadalajara, Avera, a cut in style, and Bracky Financial. Thanks for your continued support of Pierce Trappers baseball. Top of the third, about to get underway, returning for his third inning of work is Ryan Cross, the left-handed arm for the Trappers. Struck out the side in the last inning, but has had to ride the pine for a long time as his team put up four runs in support. So Cameron Daigle, the lone batter in this ball game that is yet to get an at-bat, will step up to the plate. The windup and pitch will go high for ball one. So one ball, no strikes to Daigle. Daigle hasn't batted in quite some time. His last at-bat was on Sunday. Ah! Pop-up. In the infield, diving for it is Braden Cordes. The gold glove winner showing why. Out number one on the pop up to Braden Cordes. Cordes with a top 10 worthy play in the infield. Wow. So one away in the inning on the pop out to third for Daigle. It'll bring up Bittner, who popped out to the shortstop Patrick Connor in the first at bat of the ball game. First pitch will miss outside for ball one. Pitch will catch the outside part of the plate for strike number one as Cross. Runs even on the count to Bittner in round two between Bittner and Cross. The 1-1 one, one will catch the outside part of the plate, puts the count to one ball, two strikes. One, two will head outside, spin moving is strong before firing it back up to Cross. We'll even the count. Two balls, two strikes. Another pitch will miss and the count will run full to Pittner. Three balls, two strikes, bases are empty, one away in the top of the third. Three, two, swung on and miss. Strikeout number four. Stri strikeout number five for Ryan Cross. I thought that was four in a row, but had somehow forgotten about the diving play by Cordes. So two away in the inning will bring up Sitzman, who's one for one, the lone Whiskey Jack with a base hit. He's singled in the first. First pitch will go high above the lettering for ball one. Give an update from around the Expedition League as the pitch will be a breaking ball that misses inside for ball two. Quick talk between Sitzman and the home plate umpire in Alex Shoemaker. That pitch will catch the strike zone on the inside part of the plate. Two balls and one strike to the Whiskey Jacks second baseman. So 2-1, pitch will go low in the dirt, skipping a good block by Strong. Three balls, one strike. So a 3-1 count. And out away from getting out of the Whiskey Jack third. Pop fly will head into center field, chasing after it and dropping in front of Eric Mast. It's a base hit for Sitzman. He's two for two.
It'll bring up Caleb McDowell, flew out to right to Caden Cardoso in his last at-bat. Went one for four in yesterday's contest against the Fremont move. So a runner at first in Ethan Sitzman. He advanced to second base last inning before being stranded there off the Rettstein strikeout looking back in the first. Pitch from Cross will be dribbler over to Connor. The shortstop fires on to second for one, but that's all that was needed with one away in the inning. It will be a fielder's choice. Inning over, middle of the third inning, the Pure Trappers four in the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Nothing. We'll be back as the Trappers, bottom of the order, due up in Reinhardt, Yancey, and Cordes. Trappers fans, summer is here. Get your boat back in shape with a visit to Dano's Marine. Dano's Marine will get you back out on the water this summer with excellent service and years of experience. Give them a call at 605-224-6612 or visit them at 320 St. Charles Street in Pier. Any water, any problem, Dano's Marine. Join the Shell's loyalty program and never pay full price for gas again. Shell's loyalty members also get monthly specials for increased savings. Shell's doesn't just fill up your tank, but it also fills up your stomach with a variety of food and drinks. Become a loyalty club member today by visiting Shell's at 621 Sioux Avenue or give them a call at 605-224-6266. Back on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams. Bottom of the third about to get underway. There is a new pitcher for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Jake Anderson will only go through two innings of work as Dylan Cooster will come into the ball game in the native of Coweta, Oklahoma. Cooster in five appearances, one start. Has a 1-0 record with two saves on the year. Has pitched in five, has pitched a 5.25 ERA in 12 innings pitched. Has allowed 18 hits, 10 runs, seven of them earned. Has walked four, struck out five. He'll have to take on the bottom of the order in Reinhardt, Yancey, and Cordes. As the superstars continue entertaining fans. Here from Hyde Stadium, a dance contest with a few members of the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Reinhardt stands at home next to Stein, the catcher, waiting for the dance battle to commence. What is happening right now? I have no words for what just happened, but we still have a baseball game to go to, and it's Brock Reinhardt leading things off. So Reinhardt leads things off. He's still looking for his first at bat. As a line drive will be hit to right field, that drops in front of the right fielder Fogelstrom, and the first pitch by the new pitcher in Cooster will be a base hit for Brock Reinhardt. It'll bring up Yancey. First pitch will run inside, catching the strike zone for strike number one. So no balls, one strike now to Yancey. He grounded out the third in his last at bat, swing and a miss for strike number two. So no balls, two strikes to Cole Yancey. 
Runner at first base. Pitch will run high and tight. Yancey ducks out of the way. Puts the count to one and two. So Cooster in his first pitch allowed a base hit to Brock Reinhardt. Now has a one-two count against Cole Yancey. Pickoff attempt back to first base, but back in safely is Reinhardt. Sliding and with a tag, but not in time. Cooster will step off the mound once more. Yancey remains in the batter's box. One and two, the pitch on the outside part of the plate will even the count to Yancey, two balls and two strikes. So 2-2. Two, two. Runner goes, swing and a miss, a strike him out. Won't be a strike him out, throw him out as in safely as Brock Reinhardt with the stolen base. For Reinhardt, his second stolen base attempt of the year, both of them haven't been successful. Braden Cordes will step up. He walked and later came around to score in his first plate appearance last inning. He bats with a runner at second base and one out in the bottom of the third. Stepping off the mound is Cooster. Before taking on Braden Cordes once more. First pitch high and tight. Cordes moved his head out of the way. Four ball one. So one ball, no strikes, bottom of the third, Trappers four, Whiskey Jacks zero. Pop fly heading to right field, chasing after it, and it will head out of play into the prairie beyond the Trappers. Dug out on the first base side, will even the count to one ball and one strike. Pitcher Cooster, a junior out of the University of the Ozarks playing for the Eagles. 1-1, one, one, chopped foul towards the Whiskey Jacks dugout, puts the count to 1-2. and two. Update elsewhere in the Expedition League. A barn burner through the first inning in Fremont. 7-4, Sabredogs lead. Fouled back into the screen, keeps the count at 1-2 to Braden Cordes. So 11 runs in one inning down in Moeller Field in Fremont, Nebraska. Stepping back in with a 1-2 count is Braden Cordes. Look over at second base, the wind up and pitch on the one two, fouled back into the screen, keeps the count at one and two. So Cordis staying alive in the at bat. In this at bat has seen five pitches, only three of them going into the count with a one and two count. The one, two, another one will be fouled off. Cordis expertly defending this at bat. Elsewhere in the Expedition League, a scoreless game in the bottom of the second between the Western Nebraska Pioneers and Spearfish Sasquatch. Sunfish leading the Sodbusters three to nothing from Karis Park in Sioux Falls. One, two will be popped up in the middle infield there and making the catch is the center fielder in Daigle. Staying at second base is Brock Reinhardt. Three Whiskey Jacks converged. However, only one of them made the catch and that's the important th thing is that the catch was eventually made as Cordis flies out the center. 
So it's inning number three here from Hyatt Stadium, and it will be the third plate appearance for Caden Cardoso after walking and doubling. He's one for one today with three RBIs. Four to nothing Pier in the bottom of the third. In the top of the fourth, the Badlands Big Sticks lead the Mining City Tommyknockers six to two. Big Six and Tommy Knockers on opposite spectrums of streaks as Cardoso will swing and miss, fouling it back into the backstop. The Tommy Knockers have lost four straight. The Big Sticks, winners of six in a row. Big Six trying to extend both of those streaks. They have a six to two lead. Finally, Casper and Canyon County about to get underway from Caldwell, Idaho. 0-1, Cardoso picks up the bat. Wind up and pitch on the outside part of the plate. Called a strike. No balls, two strikes, two away in the bottom of the third. O2 count. Cardoso swatting a few flies and gnats away from the natural grass field here at Hyde Stadium. The 0-2 swung on and hit deep to right field, heading back towards the wall. This one is out of here. A two-run home run for Caden Cardoso. His third of the season and his first here at Hyde since opening day. It's the Pure Trappers 5-6 and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks nothing. They're breaking out the home run hoop. Cardoso gives a short walk over, blobs it up, bang! Caden Cardoso slams it down. Six to nothing, Trappers lead. And that was a shock of energy into the crowd for Caden Cardoso, it's six to nothing. It brings up Patrick Goner. Now everyone has to settle down as a pitch will him high and inside to Connor, ball one. one -oh, now a high pop fly in the middle infield. Underneath it is Sitzman. Sitzman sits under it and will make the catch. A pop out to second, ends the frame. But a two-run home run for Caden Cardoso. He has five RBIs and accounts for five of the six Trapper runs scored so far. We're through a third of this ball game. Trappers well in front, six to nothing over Wheat City. The Pier Trappers are proud to partner with the Governor's Inn, the exclusive motel partner of the Pier Trappers. Call 605-224-4200 for a special Trappers rate when you visit Pier and Hyde Stadium. Whether you're coming for the best hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation in the Midwest, just passing through, or coming out to the ballpark, the Governor's Inn is the place for you. When it comes to clothing in the Capital Area, Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry have you covered. Speedway Laundry offers the fastest way to clean clothes, with free Wi-Fi offered while you wait. Next door, family-owned and operated Total Beauty has a constantly changing inventory of top quality clothing. Check out the newest lines in clothing by giving Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry a visit at 111 First Street in Fort Pier. Fourth inning here from Hyde Stadium, the Trappers have taken a huge lead over the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. It is six to nothing and a five RBI night for Caden Cardoso. And we don't give away pl player of the third of a ball game, but if there was such an award, it's the award for Caden Cardoso. I don't know how else you can decide that. Big attendance for the Trappers, one of the biggest since opening day at 620 spectators. Pitch will run inside, catching the strike zone for strike number one. 
Now Ryan Cross is saying, don't forget about me, although there has been fireworks on the offensive side. So no one count. The windup and pitch by Cross will go high. It will even the count at one and one. One and two, excuse me. One and one. Pitch will run inside. The count will run now to two balls, one strike. Two, Ethan, Caleb McDowell. Ground ball over to third, picked up by Cordes. Fires on to first base in time. Doing the splits is Joey Bramante. You didn't know the University of Maine had a gymnastics team, but there's Bramante doing the splits. Excuse me, that was Viano grounding out. So one away now in the inning, as it will bring up Rhett Stein 0 for 1 after striking out looking. First pitch will catch the strike zone on the outside part of the plate. A couple of defensive gems by Braden Cordes, a couple of offensive gems by Caden Cardoso, and so far a two-hit performance by Ryan Cross. It's been an all-around day for the Trappers. Another ground ball over to third, picked up by Cordes. Fire on to first. Bramante has it again. A pair of 5-3 ground outs lead off the fourth. So it brings up Lingley, who struck out swinging back in the second. First pitch misses for ball number one. So a 1-0 count now to Lingley. A big swing and a miss will even the count at one and one. So a pair of 5-3 ground outs led this inning off. 1-1 one, one count, the pitch from Cross will go high just above the Grand Forks lettering, two balls and one strike. Pitch will go high, missing again, three and one. So three balls, one strike now to Lingley. Cross in danger of losing him. He has not walked the batter yet today. The 3-1 swing and a miss will put the count full, 3-2. and two. An update from the Stanley Cup semifinals, game seven between the Islanders and the Lightning. 3-2 will run inside and hit Lingley to put a runner on for the Whiskey Jacks. Second hit batter of the night. With 14 minutes left to go in the second period, Yanni Gord scores his third of the playoffs shorthanded for the Tampa Bay Lightning. It is a one to nothing lead for Tampa Bay. Trying to go back to back as Stanley Cup champions. The hit by pitch will bring up Dylan McKee. McKee struck out swinging. He was out number two of the second inning in which Ryan Cross struck out the side. Runner at first and the first pitch will run outside. Ball one to McKee. Viano and Stein who led off this inning both grounded out to Braden Cordes, the third baseman tonight for the Trappers. 1-0 will Catch the strike zone on the inside part of the plate. Strike number one, Strong couldn't hold on to the baseball. However, Lingley stays at first.
A 1-1 chopped over to the third base side. Cordes thought he had another play, but it chops foul. Puts the count at 1-2. Cross a strike away from pitching through his fourth shutout inning. Update from Omaha in the top of the fifth. Texas and Mississippi State still tied at two in a must-win game for the Longhorns. One, two, popped up towards the press box just over our heads for strike number two. We've had a couple foul balls come back, hit close to the windows, up, down, left, right. Pitch goes outside, two and two. And there's one window that it really cannot afford to go in. The camera that you're looking at right now is sitting in an open window to avoid glare. If that foul ball comes up and hits that camera, that's going to be a big bill to pay. The fly balls hit the left field, drops in front of Yancey. Thought about going for third was Lingley, but stops and retreats back to second. So McKee singles the third base hit of the game for the Whiskey Jacks. It'll bring up Houston Fogelstrom, struck out looking to end the second in his only at-bat of the day so far. Update on the final playoff game that we'd been keeping updates on as the fly balls hit the deep right field. Chasing back is Cardoso up at the wall, and it's a home run for Houston Fogelstrom. A three-run home run cuts the deficit in half. It's Fogelstrom's fourth of the season. So it's now Trappers six, Whiskey Jacks three. Off the three-run home run by Fogelstrom, it drives in both Lingley and McKee. Fogelstrom has been the Whiskey Jacks' most dangerous hitter so far this season as it will bring up Cameron Daigle, who popped out to third in his last at-bat. But Fogelstrom, in 18 base hits this year, as the first pitch will catch the strike zone for strike number one. But in 18 base hits this season, has had three doubles, two triples, and now four home runs. But he's batting eight hole for the Whiskey Jacks. 0-1 ground ball to the first base side. Foul, no balls, two strikes. So three across this inning, all three on the Fogelstrom home run. It's now six to three trappers here in the top of the fourth. Cross winds up and deals a pitch in the dirt, kicks up some dust. One ball, two strikes. But with about five minutes to go in the first half, the Milwaukee Bucks lead the Atlanta Hawks 57 to 41. One, two will run high, evening the count at two and two. That game in game two of the Eastern Conference Finals with Atlanta leading the series one to nothing. Swing and a miss for strike number three as Daigle goes down on strikes. The inning is finally over. But for Ryan Cross, it's three batters too late as a three-run home run by Houston Fogelstrom gets the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks on the board. Daigle strike out the sixth of the day for Cross. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth with Mass, Vermonti, and Staus due up for the Trappers. In times like these, it's good to know there's a place where people know who you are, no matter how long you've been gone. A place where the smells of home cooking are still in the air, where a simple wave warms your heart, and sharing stories with family, friends, and your community is just a way of life. Yes, in times like these, it's good to be home. Farmers Union Insurance, protecting what's important in life.
Back for the bottom of the fourth inning, Mass, Vermonti, and Staus do up for the Trappers. A few sponsors we'd like to say thank you to, including Corner Station, The Crossing, Cowboy Country Stores, Edward Jones, Mark Ullman, First Dakota National Bank, and Branding Iron Bistro. Thanks for your continued support of Pier Trappers Baseball. Leading things off will be Eric Mast. He's one for two today. First pitch swinging, a hit to deep right field. That one's heading back towards the track. Reaching up and it will hop off the wall. Rounding first and heading for second is Eric Mast slamming into the wall in center field was Cameron Daigle. But a leadoff double for Eric Mast. It's his second base hit of the ball game. So it'll bring up Joey Bramante. Bramante today 0 for 1. He struck out and was hit by a pitch. Bramante came into this ball game tied for the team lead in home runs with two. He has since lost that after the Caden Cardoso home run. Cardoso now leads the team with three. So Bramante leads things off, or after the Eric Mast double. Mast dancing at second base, a swing and a miss by Bramante for strike number one. Dylan Cooster, in his second inning of work, allowed that home run to Cardoso, now the leadoff double to Eric Mast. Trappers trying to get a run back after the Wheat City Whiskey Jack struck for three in the top half of this inning. 0-1 will catch the strike zone for strike number two, looking for Bramante. Bramante this season has struck out 21 times, with just eight base hits to his name. O2 pitch will go low. One ball, two strikes. Bramante this season. Came into this game batting 195 as he'll swing and foul a pitch off. One ball and two strikes. Bramante with a 365 on base percentage and a 731 on base plus slugging. One, two with Mast at second base, and nobody out bottom four. One, two, swung on and missed strike number three. Second time Bramante's gone down on strikes this evening. Staus will step up. Still looking for his first base hit as a trapper. He is one for two. Excuse me. 0 for 1 today with a strikeout back in the first and a walk in the second. First pitch to Staus will miss low for ball one. We appreciate those of you watching along, making us a part of your Friday night here on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams. So now a 1-0 to Staus, runner goes, the throw down to third will go over McKee, the third baseman. Safe at third will be Eric Mast. So Mast now just 90 feet away. Staus, all he needs is a sacrifice. His first plate appearance for the Trappers was a sacrifice fly in the second inning of yesterday's ball game. He faces a 2-0 count. Make it a 3-0 count as a pitch will go high and outside. On deck for the Trappers is Strong. Strong today, one for two.
3-0 on the way. Swung on and missed, swinging at a 3-0 for strike one. One more update from Omaha as the Longhorns have taken the lead over Mississippi State, 3-2 in the fifth. 3-1 the pitch, a line drive hit to left field, chasing after it is Viano. Viano will be will not be there to make the catch. Will be there to make the catch. Excuse me, as it's a sacrifice fly to left field. As Mast will cross the plate. That makes it seven to three in favor of the Trappers off the sack fly by Stouts. So Strong steps in with two away in the inning and nobody aboard. Mass, that stolen base coming back to help the Trappers as he ends up scoring on the sack fly by Stouts. Pitch will miss low for ball one. Seven to three, Trappers. Trappers extending their lead with that Stouse sack fly as another pitch will miss low. Two balls, no strikes. Trappers have now scored in three consecutive innings, a four-run first, a big swing and a miss by Strong, puts the count at 2-1. A four-run second inning, a two-run third, and now a one-run fourth here from Hyde Stadium. Two balls, one strike to Strong. We'll go low, three and one. So the Trappers having a great offensive performance. Typically, when the Trappers score a lot, it's all in contained in one inning as a strike will be called, putting the count full. But here the Trappers have spread out their scoring in the second, third, and fourth to lead seven to three. Payoff pitch on the way, swung on and missed by Strong. It's his second time striking out tonight. Third strikeout by the relief pitcher, Cooster, as that will end the inning for the Trappers. A sack fly by Ty Stouse puts another run on the board through four complete innings. It's the Pier Trappers four, excuse me, the Pier Trappers seven and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks three. We'll be back for the top of the fifth when we return here on the Pier Trappers Mixler and YouTube live streams. Hey, it's the old top Gator here with Gators. Pizza, pasta, subs, and the North Ridge Plaza. Gators is known for top quality food. Now you can have our food selection is delivered right to your front door using DoorDash. That's right, now you have four ways that you can get great Gators food. Dine-in, carry-out, curbside pickup, and now delivery through DoorDash. Gators has been serving the Pier area and now Trappers baseball fans since 1987. Gators, Pizza Pasta Subs in the Northridge Plaza. Back for the top of the fifth inning here on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams as the superstars continue to entertain fans. It's Reinhardt, Yancey, and Cordes. Excuse me, it will be the top of the order in Bittner. Sitzman and McDowell do up for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Sitzman has been having a good day for the Whiskey Jacks. He's two for two today. And oh my goodness as one of the superstars have now just eaten a member of the ground screw. The things you'll see at Hyde Stadium. Ryan Cross returns for his fifth inning of work. Bittner, Sitzman, and McDowell do up this inning for the Whiskey Jacks. Six.
Seven to three, Trappers lead. After Staus hit a sacrifice fly in the bottom of the fourth. Trappers extended their lead from a three run lead to a four run lead. Taking a look elsewhere in the Expedition League, we'll give you another update from around the EL. A much tighter ball game in Dickinson, North Dakota as the Big Sticks lead the Mining City Tommyknockers seven to six. The Sioux Falls Sunfish lead the Hastings Sodbusters three to two in the top of the eighth inning at Karras Park. The Pioneers and Sasquatch tied at zero in the fourth. Bottom of the first, Horseheads and Spuds tied at zero. And in the top of the third, the Surus Valley Sabredogs lead the Fremont Moo 12 to four. Certainly not a position that the Moo are used to. First pitch from Cross will go for strike number one. So Bittner leads things off. He'll swing through the second pitch of the at-bat. He now falls behind 0-2. Bittner, the Mesa Community College Thunderbird, calls Phoenix, Arizona his hometown. Went three for seven overall against the Fremont Moo in their series in Grand Forks. Bittner today 0 for 2, popping out to short and striking out. Strike number three called as Bittner will slowly walk back to the dugout for out number th one of the inning for Ryan Cross. Other than allowing that one home run has been lights out seventh strikeout of the ball game for him. It'll bring up Sitzman, who's two for two today, has been one of the more dangerous Wheat City hitters. A pitch and a ground ball heading to the shortstop. Connor will pick it up, fire onto first. It is in time for the out, and Sitzman finally put out on the play. So it'll bring up Caleb McDowell. McDowell today 0 for 2. Flew out to right and reached on a fielder's choice. Cross rejects the first couple of signs before finally accepting one. A pitch will catch the strike zone for strike number one. Again, Cross only really has one blemish on the day and it was a hit by pitch a single and a home run, all back to back that allowed three runs to score for Wheat City. Cross winds up with a 1 1, swung on and missed for strike number two. Here in white pants, navy blue jerseys and caps. So one, two will be grounded to the first base side. Bramante will pick it up and step on first himself to end the top of the fifth. By half inning marks, we're halfway through this ball game. It's the Pier Trappers seven and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks three. We'll be back for the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the order due up for the Pier Trappers when we come back. Dan O's Marine is a proud partner of Pier Trappers Baseball. Located at 320 St. Charles Street, Dan O's provides service on your boat to get you back out on the water in the dog days of summer. Give them a call at 605-224-6612. That's Dan O's Marine at 605-224-6612. Any water, any problem, Dan O's Marine. Wow, Shell's Quick Stop is the place to go for a variety of food, drinks, fishing tackle, and more. Hungry? Come on down for breakfast pizza, burritos, biscuits and gravy, soup, salad, and wraps. 
thirsty? Try their hot and cold espresso drinks, lattes, frappuccinos, and milkshakes from the drive-up window. Heading down to the water? Stop by to pick up minnows, crawlers, and leeches to secure the big bites. All of it's down at Shells at 621 West Sioux Avenue. Back for the bottom of the fifth inning, Brock Reinhardt leads things off. It's the bottom of the order for the Trappers in Reinhardt, Yancey, and Cordes. So Reinhardt leads things off. He's one for one today. First pitch swinging to the right side. That gets through for a base hit. Make it two for two for Brock Reinhardt. So the Trappers in every inning so far has led things off with a base runner aboard. They've yet to score in only one inning. They did not score in the first when the leadoff man got on board. The Trappers would certainly like to keep their streak of three innings in a row, getting a base runner aboard on the first batter of the inning and later having a run come across that frame. Cole Yancey is 0 for 1 today. Pickoff attempt back to first, but back in safely sliding is Reinhardt. Swing and a miss by Yancey. For strike number one, Yancey 0 for 2 today. Grounded out to third and the second. Struck out swinging in the third. So an 0-1 with Reinhardt standing at first. Pitch will go low, evens the count at 1-1. One and one. Yancey for the Trappers, the native of Monroe, Georgia. Mentioned it a few times prior, but close to the University of Georgia. 1-1, one, one, ground ball up the third base side. Foul will put the count to 1-2. and two. However, Yancey attending the University of North Georgia playing for the Nighthawks this season for the Nighthawks batted 273. Only three base hits, but three RBIs. So now a one-two count to Cole Yancey. Cooster will pick off and back in safely sliding a much closer pickoff attempt to Brock Reinhardt. Reinhardt, not too much of a threat to steal. However, he does have a stolen base in this ball game. Two for two on the season. One, two will be fouled back, heading on to the intersection of Capital and Re. Count remains one and two. About an hour and 40 minutes into this ball game. Trappers up seven to three. Pickoff attempt, but back in safely is Reinhardt. I swear each of those pickoff attempts are getting closer and closer. So one, two, the pitch will kick up some chalk from the left-handed batter's box and even the count at two balls, two strikes as Yancey steps back in the box. 5 pitches in this at bat to Cole Yancey with the 6th on the way. High pop fly on the third base side in foul territory calling for it and underneath it is McKee and will reach up to make the catch so a foul out to third for Cole Yancey. Braden Cordes is the next to grab a bat for the Trappers. Today he's 0 for 1. He walked and came around to score in the second, flew out to center in the third. Cooster had a bit of a rough start, allowing the two-run home run to Caden Cardoso in the third as a pitch will catch the strike zone for strike number one. And the sacrifice fly and leadoff double last inning to Staus and Mast, respectively, but is seeming to settle down. 
The 0-1 pitch will be grounded up the first base side for strike two. So no balls, two strikes to Cordes. 0-2 high and inside. Cordes ducking out of the way. Puts the count to one and two. So Cordes with a 1-2 count, 0 for 1 today. Swung on and missed. Cordes will strike out swinging. Fourth strikeout by Cooster in relief. Cardoso has been having himself a game so far. Has a total of five RBIs, has a three RBI double, a two run home run, not to mention the first inning. He drew a walk, has reached in all three plate appearances. Cardoso two for two today. Pickoff attempt back to first, Reinhardt slides back in safely. So Cardoso right now the hottest bat in the Trapper dugout. Cardoso getting revenge from the ball that almost left the yard yesterday. Trappers fell just short in a 6-5 loss as a foul ball will be put up the third base side for strike number one. Launch angle was simply too high yesterday for Cardoso as he ended up going to deep right field. It was an error by the third bit by the right fielder, excuse me. That scored a couple runs, but it wasn't enough in the 6-5 loss to Sioux Falls. 0-1, Cooster accepts the sign, kicks and fires a swing and a miss by Cardoso for strike number two. Only the second time Cardoso has faced off against Cooster. The first at bat against him was a two run home run in the third. Cooster, the second pitcher for Wheat City. The first, Jake Anderson, only lasted two innings, allowing four hits. Four runs, three of them earned. So Cardoso aces an 0-2 count against Cooster. The 0-2 will miss low, one ball, two strikes. So now a 1-2 count to Cardoso goes high and outside. We'll even the count at 2-2. Two and two. So Cardoso, even in the count, 2-2. Two two, runner stands at first base, two away in the inning. Reinhardt, a leadoff single, hasn't been able to move forward. A line drive down the left field line, hooking foul into the Wheat City bullpen. No one occupying it right now. That ball will roll into fair territory, running over to retrieve it as Viano, tossing it back in. So Cardoso steps back in with a 2-2 count. So for Jake Anderson, the starting pitcher, two innings pitched, four hits, four runs, all of them earned, walked five, struck out three. Cardoso will foul one towards the Trappers' bullpen. It's dugout, excuse me, three. A 2-2 two -two count, runner at first. Bottom of the fifth inning, Trappers seven, Whiskey Jacks three. Whiskey Jacks, top of the sixth inning. The next inning to be played, it will be Viano, Stein, and Lingley do up. Two and two. 
Accepting the sign is Cooster. Pickoff attempt back to first as Reinhardt has turned that area between first and second about maybe three, four feet off of first base into his own slip and slide. He's been picked off a ton this inning. 2-2, two, two, a line shot to right field, heading towards the right fielder and Fogelstrom, who will reach up and make the catch. But Cardoso put another ride into that one, a bullet to right field. We're through five completed innings. It's the Pier Trappers 7 and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks 3. We'll be back for the top of the sixth here on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler channels. The Governor's Inn is the exclusive motel partner of the Pier Trappers. Check out the special Trappers rate for your visit to Pier and Hyde Stadium this summer. Call 605-224-4200 directly to get the Trappers rate. With free wireless internet, a deluxe breakfast, and an indoor pool and hot tub, there's no reason not to stop at the Governor's Inn. Top of the sixth inning. About to get underway with Viano, Stein, and Lingley due up for the Whiskey Jacks. It's the 4-5-6 of their batting order. A few sponsors of the 2021 Pier Trappers baseball season that we'd like to say thank you to, including Big Tom's Diner, Aflac, Bob's Lounge, Capital City Wine and Spirits, Capital Sports, and La Minestra. Thanks for your continued support of Pier Trappers baseball. Another inning in which the Zooper Stars are entertaining. As Ryan Cross returns for his sixth inning of work, only one blemish on his resume so far, and it was a three-run home run hit by Houston Fogelstrom. Current line score, three runs on four hits, no errors for Wheat City. They've left three runners left on base. The Trappers, seven runs on eight hits. No errors. The Trappers have left five on. Six on base, excuse me. So just waiting for the play ball signal. And we are good to go. Pitch will go low and outside for ball number one to lead things off here in the top of the sixth. Another pitch will miss from cross. Two balls, no strikes. Pitcher looks like just walking into the Trappers' bullpen. It is Brent Bramlett, the right-hander, in potential relief. Ground ball over to third. Diving play is court as fire onto first. It will be too weak of a throw as in safely is Owen Viano, his first base hit of the day. It was a great play by Cordes. Just couldn't get the throw off in time. And when he did get the throw off in time, it was too weak of a throw to get to first base. Just a really tough play for Cordes. So Rhett Stein will step up. He's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout looking back in the first and a ground out to third in inning number four. Cross the left-handed pitcher against the right-handed Whiskey Jack batter. The first pitch will be a ground ball over to third. It will get past the glove of Cordes into left field. Putting on the brakes after rounding second base is Owen Viano, and the first two runners for the Whiskey Jacks are aboard via the base hit. It'll bring up Nolan Lingley. He's 0 for 1, striking out, swinging in the second inning. 
He was hit by a pitch in inning number four. So Ling Lee steps up. First pitch from Cross will be a pitch outside on the breaking ball for ball number one. Two base hits this inning have increased the Whiskey Jack hit total to six. one -oh, the pitch will go outside, inside for ball two. So now two balls, no strikes to Nolan Lingley. Runners at first and second for Wheat City trying to claw their way back into this ball game. 2-0 runs inside, partially gets away from strong runners, stay where they are. Three balls, no strikes. Cross today has struck out seven. And with a 3-0 count, it's worth mentioning, has not allowed a walk to this point in the ball game. However, has allowed, has hit two batters, so two free passes. The 3-0, that one will miss inside, and there's walk number one of the ball game as he walks the bases loaded. So Cross will now get a mound visit from the first baseman, Bramante, and the catcher in strong. Bramante does have some pitching experience. He pitched for the Trappers on their trip to Minot, taking on the Sabredogs. Cross just getting a few words of encouragement. Bramante will step off the mound and head back to his position at first base. Bases are loaded with nobody out. For Dylan McKee, McKee one for two today, struck out swinging and singled. Big spot here for the Whiskey Jacks to try to get back in this ball game. Cross winds up and deals the first pitch, will be a breaking ball in there for a strike. Take a look around the Expedition League. The Hastings Sodbusters have taken the lead over the Sunfish 5-3 to three as a pitch will be fouled back into the screen for strike number two by McKee. 5-3, to three, top of the ninth for Sioux Falls. Canyon County has taken a 1-0 to nothing lead over Casper in the top of the third, home game for the Spuds. And Western Nebraska leads Spearfish 3-1, to one, top of the fifth from Black Hills Energy Stadium in Spearfish. So now an 0-2 could be a big strikeout for Ryan Cross. The 0-2, that one's outside for ball one. That gets a few groans from the home supporters. Elsewhere in the sports world, end of the second period, Tampa Bay still leading New York one to nothing. Ground ball will head up the left side Seems like McKee fouled it off his ankle. Bottom of the sixth inning in Omaha, the Texas Longhorns still lead the Mississippi State Bulldogs 3-2. to two. Finally, with about nine minutes to go in the third quarter, Milwaukee leads Atlanta 87-51 to in game two of the Eastern Conference Finals. Foul ball will head back. Hit the window of the next door press box, and it will remain a 1-2 count. So one ball, two strikes. Bases are loaded, nobody out. 7-3, Trappers lead Whiskey Jacks at the plate, with Dylan McKee taking the at-bat with a 1-2 count. Wind up and pitch by Cross. Ground ball, this could be two. Cordes fires on to second in time for one. Over to first, and that will be an RBI double play. The Whiskey Jacks do get a run out of it. A run scoring double play.
So a 5-4-3 double play grounded into by Dylan McKee will score Viano from third. It's now 7-4. Cross now just an out away from getting this inning, but it's Houston Fogelstrom who hit the three-run home run against Cross who takes the at-bat. First pitch misses for ball one. Advancing to third on the play as well was Rhett Stein Lingley out between first and second off the double play. So runners still at third for the Whiskey Jacks. Two away here in the bottom, top of the sixth. Swing and a miss for strike number one from Fogelstrom. Fogelstrom is one for two today. Hit that three-run home run back in the fourth and struck out looking in the second. One-one, pitch will run inside. That gets away, breaking for home and scoring will be Rhett Stein. So Stein will come in to score. That makes it a 7-5 Trapper lead. Whiskey Jacks chipping away at this ballgame. Count will run to two balls and one strike. Wind up and pitch by Cross will go high, 3-1. If Vogelstrom repeat, repeats his at-bat result of the fourth inning, it would still just be a one-run game. High pop fly. Heading back is Strong. Strong will reach up to make the catch, a pop out to the catcher to end the frame. Middle of the sixth inning, the Trappers do let another couple runs score for the Whiskey Jacks, but they still lead by a score of 7-5. to five. We'll be back for the bottom of the sixth with the 2-3-4 in Connor, Mast, and Bramante do up. Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry are your homes for everything clothing in the Capital Area. Since 2010, Total Beauty has offered great customer service and competitive prices. Next door at Speedway Laundry, they have you covered for a fast, convenient way to wash and dry your clothes and other household items including king-size comforters. Visit them at 111 First Street in Fort Pier. Bottom of the six, Will Haiti checking in for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, the Valley City State University Viking out of Dauphin, Manitoba. In six appearances, one start, a one and one record. One save, a 5.14 ERA in 14 innings pitched. 20 hits, 14 runs, eight of them earned, has walked six, struck out 13. We'll take the first pitch for a ball to the first batter that he'll have to face off in Patrick Connor. Another pitch will run inside. A 2-0 count will start off Hladey's appearance.
In his last appearance just two days ago against the Fremont Moose, another pitch will miss a 3-0 count now to Patrick Connor. Connor today one for two. Pitch one inning did not allow a base hit, no runs, no walks or strikeouts, just simply going out and getting out. 3-0, that one will catch the strike zone on the inside part of the plate. Three balls and one strike. Connor singled in the first inning, walked and came around to score in the second, popped out to second in the third. Now another pop fly right to second base, but calling for this one will be Lingley, the first baseman. As Connor will lead things off with a pop out to third, first. So Mast will be the next to grab a bat. Mast today, two for three, flew out to left in the first, singled in the second, doubled, later coming around to score in the fourth. Pitch will go low for ball one. Pitch will catch the strikes on on the outside part of the plate, evens the count at one and one. The right-handed pitcher for the Whiskey Jacks against the left-handed batter for the Trappers. The one-one swung on and popped into right field. The center field chasing back is Daigle will reach up just prior to the warning track to make the catch. So a fly out to center will be Mast's fate against Slady. It'll bring up Bramante. Bramante today 0 for 2, a pair of strikeouts and a hit by pitch. Bramante's first swing against the new pitcher will go foul for a strike. Last pitcher for the Whiskey Jacks in Dylan Cooster. Final line pitched in three innings, four hits, three runs allowed, all three of them earned. Did not walk a batter, struck out four. So now an 0-1 count to Joey Bramante, two away in the bottom of the sixth inning. The 0-1 will go high and inside evens the count at one and one. Has been a very good ball game to this point Although the Trappers have had the lead throughout the entire game, the Whiskey Jacks have certainly made things interesting, taking a 6-0 Trapper lead into a 7-5 Trapper lead as a pitch will run inside to Bramante and hit him in the shoulder. Second time Bramante has been hit by a pitch tonight. So it brings up Staus. Staus today 0 for 1. Struck out, walked, and hit a sacrifice fly. Pitch will go low for ball number one. Two ties. Staus still looking for his first base hit as a trapper making his debut last night. So now a 1-0 runner at first base. Pitch will go well high and outside. Two balls, no strikes to Stouts. Stouts, the native of Wildwood, Missouri. Batted 176 with 13 base hits. Three doubles for the Southeast Missouri State Redhawks or SEMO. Pitch will catch the strike zone for strike number one. Two balls and one strike. So 2-1 now to Stouts. Lady kicks and fires on a pitch high and outside. Three balls, one strike. So now a hitter's count to tie Stouts. Trappers 
scoring all seven of their runs in the second, third, and fourth innings. Seven to five, Trappers lead bottom of the sixth. The windup and pitch by Hlady will go outside, but catch the strike zone, putting the count full to Staus three and two. Trappers currently sit at eight and 16 on the season. Wheat City at 11 and 13. Wheat City has spent almost the entirety of their schedule as a pitch will be fouled off heading on to Capitol Avenue, potential car hit. Unable to see if it did. The count remains full. Full count, runner at first base and Joey Bramante. The pitch is swung on and just getting a piece of it as Stouse to keep the at-bat alive. Trappers have a two-run lead. They also have a two-hit lead. They lead eight to six in the hits category. 3-2 to Staus will go high as he draws a walk. It's the second time he's walked today. So Staus will reach on the walk, advancing over to second base is Joey Bramante, who also reached on a free pass via the hit by pitch. So Strong will step in. He's one for three today. He's singled in the second, struck out swinging in the second. He both led off and ended the Trapper's second inning and struck out swinging in the fourth. So one for two, one for three with a single and two strikeouts. First pitch will be popped up high and out of play. Will hit off the top of the Grandstand Pavilion for general admission. So that will go for strike number one to Strong. First of a three game series here from Hyde Stadium between the Whiskey Jacks and Trappers. They'll also play tomorrow and Sunday. Ground ball over to the first base side will hook foul for strike number two. after the three game series. The Trappers will have a day off on Monday before traveling back to Minot to take on the Sabredogs. Pitch will go inside for ball number one. Still two away, bottom of the sixth inning. One ball, two strikes. Meanwhile, for the Whiskey Jacks, they'll also have a day off on Monday, but then travel down to Garing, Nebraska to take on the Pioneers in a three game series. Sky high pitch heading to right field. Fogelstrom underneath it will reach up and make the catch for out number three of the inning. The Trappers do get a couple runners aboard, including one into scoring position, but can't push any across. Through two thirds of this ball game, it's the Pier Trappers seven and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks five. We'll be back for ending number seven here on the Pure Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams. You don't need an illness to need a doctor. You don't need to feel sick to feel better. You don't need to be unwell to get well. What you do need is a primary care provider at Sanford Health. Better health care starts with regular wellness visits and a familiar face who knows you, your concerns, and your goals. We're here before you need us. We're here when you need us. We're here after you need us. We're here for you. Find your primary care provider at SanfordHealth.org today.
Welcome back to the top of the seventh inning. A few sponsors we'd like to thank for the 2021 Pier Trappers baseball season, including L&M Barbershop, Long Branch, the Oahe Family YMCA, Oahe Pond, Pier Physical Therapy, and the South Dakota Lottery. Thanks for your continued support of Pier Trappers baseball. A new pitcher for the Pier Trappers in number 19, Brent Bramlett. Bramlett, the right-hander out of Spokane, Washington, will be the new pitcher relieving Ryan Cross. Bramlett, the native of Meridian, Idaho, in eight appearances this year has an 0-3 record with a 19 ERA. In nine innings, Fitch has allowed 10 hits, 20 runs, 19 of them earned, has walked 21, struck out six. His last appearance against the Sabre Dogs only pitched a third of an inning, did not allow a hit, allowed four walks. All four of those walks ended up scoring, being relieved for after pitching through that third of an inning. And Bramlett's ERA in 10 appearances, in nine appearances, is now at 17.1. He has walked 22, struck out nine, giving up 20 runs. Only, nine, only one of them was unearned. So Bramlett steps in for the Pier Trappers as the new pitcher. He will warm up and take on the 9-1-2 with a Whiskey Jacks order here in the top of the seventh in Daigle, Bittner, and Sitzman. So Bramlett steps up. We'll take on Daigle, Bittner, and Sitzman. So far, this game has been all trappers, but slowly but surely, the Whiskey Jacks have been fighting their way back into this ballgame. They had a three-run fourth inning and a two-run sixth inning in the middle third of this ballgame. To make this a two-run game, it's the Trappers seven and the Whiskey Jacks five. Daigle steps into the batter's box. He's 0 for 2 today, popped out to third and struck out swinging. Take a look at the final line for starting pitcher in Brent Bramlett. In Ryan Cross. Cross in six innings pitched, allowed six base hits, five runs, all of them earned, only walked one, striking out seven. So Bramlett steps up. He has been hit or miss this season for the Trappers. There have been innings where he looks lights out as the first pitch will catch the strike zone for strike number one. But there have also been innings like his last outing against the Sabre Dogs in which he could not throw strikes. What? Pitch will miss, four ball one. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. And I have to correct myself, his last appearance back on June 23rd just Two days ago against the Sunfish at Karras Park, pitched a shutout inning. Walked one, struck out one, did not allow a base hit. 1-1 one, one goes outside, puts the count to two balls and one strike to Cameron Daigle. Three balls, one strike, and now a hitter's count to the Whiskey Jack left fielder. Bramlett steps back out onto the mound. Wind up and pitch as a pitch will go low, catching the strike zone for a full count now to Daigle. Three balls and two strikes. Five runs on six hits, no errors for the Whiskey Jacks. They've left three runners on base. For the Trappers, seven runs on eight hits, no errors as a foul ball will head back into the screen, keeping the count alive. But the Trappers, seven runs, eight hits, no errors. They have left eight runners on base. 
So the payoff pitch once more. It will catch the strike zone, a strikeout looking, turning his back and heading back to the dugout is Cameron Daigle. Daigle has struck out twice tonight, his first time looking, and his first against Brent Bramlett. One away in the top of the seventh. We'll bring up the top of the order in Dean Bittner and Ethan Sitzman. Bittner today is 0 for 3, popped out to shorten the first, since then a pair of strikeouts in the third and fifth. Natural daylight sinking more and more here from Pierce, South Dakota. First pitch fouled into the screen for strike number one. Of course, an overcast day full of clouds, not helping the sun shine through. Typically can still have a bit of sunlight till around 10 o'clock. It's currently 9.15 in the central time zone. 0-1 catches the inside part of the plate. Strike number two. Taking a look over at the home plate umpire and Alex Shoemaker was Dean Bittner. A grounder over to the shortstop. Connor picks it up, firing onto first. Bramante digs it out from underneath for the out. A good play by Connor, an even better scoop by Bramante to save the out for being made. So it'll bring up Ethan Sitzman. Sitzman today is two for three. Singled in the first and third, grounded out to short in the fifth. Trappers lead by two. They're going to try to hold it at that. And when they come back up offensively, try to extend that two-run lead. Wind up and pitch by Bramlett will go high. Hitting off the bat, it will head back into the screen. That is unfortunate for Sitzman. Ducked out of the way, knew it was well high and inside, but skipping off the top of the barrel. So now an 0-1, two Sitzman, two away, nobody on. The pitch will go low in the dirt to the left-handed batter's box for ball number one. Righty-righty matchup between Sitzman and Bramlett. Sitzman, the native of Golden, Colorado, will foul one back onto the street for strike number two. Bramlett a strike away. Sitzman, the Whitman College Blue in the regular season. A big swing and a miss. A 1-2-3 inning for Brent Bramlett. Two strikeouts, one looking, one swinging. It's time to stand up and stretch here from Hyde Stadium or at home. It's the seventh inning stretch with the Pier Trappers 7 and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks 5. We'll be back for the bottom of the seventh inning when we return on the Pier Trappers Mixler live YouTube and Mixler live streams. The Pier Trappers are proud to partner with the Governor's Inn, the exclusive motel partner of the Pier Trappers. Call 605-224 4200 for a special trapper's rate when you visit Pier and Hyde Stadium. Whether you're coming for the best hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation in the Midwest, just passing through, or coming out to the ballpark, the Governor's Inn is the place for you. Bottom of the seventh inning, 
here from Hyde Stadium as the Pier Trappers have a 7-5 lead over the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Heading into the bottom of the seventh, it will be Brock Reinhardt, Cole Yancey, and Braden Cordes due up this inning. Confetti continues to fall from the seventh inning stretch as the first pitch to Reinhardt goes low, missing for ball one. So a 1-0 count as the pitch will catch the bottom of the strike zone for strike number one will even the count for Reinhardt. One ball, one strike. Reinhardt today two for two. A pair of singles and a walk. He's coming around to score twice. Pitch will bounce in the dirt, kicking up some chalk, two and one. Give another update from around the playoffs. As a pop fly in the infield, underneath it is the third baseman McKee. McKee ranges over to his left side to reach up and make the catch. So one away here in the bottom of the seventh. It brings up Yancey. But as I promised, a few more updates from around the playoffs. With five minutes to go in the third period, Tampa still holding a one to nothing lead. A foul ball will be popped up onto Capitol Ave. So no balls, one strike. At the end of the third period, Milwaukee is absolutely dominating the Atlanta Hawks. As the pitch will miss, the count will run even to one and one, or excuse me, 0-2. Oh so Yancey will take the pitch from Hladey as the pitch goes high. It will go to one ball, two strikes. But Milwaukee has a 40 point lead, 103 to 63. They're coming back with a vengeance after dropping the opener to Atlanta. And in an Eastern Conference Finals match, you would never expect there to be a 40 point deficit, but yet here we are. Pop fly will head over to the left side, will go out of play, keeping the count at 3 2. So three balls, two strikes, a line drive into left field, diving after it was Bittner, couldn't get there, and Cole Yancey will get aboard for the first time tonight via a base hit. Cordes steps up, he's 0 for 2 today, walked, struck out, and flew out. Finally, in the top of the seventh inning, the Texas Longhorns have a 4-2 lead over the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Texas currently batting as the road team. Pitch will miss high for ball one. Action going in both bullpens. One ball, no strikes. Runner goes in Yancey, it's a hit and run as it's a pop fly hit into left field. And making the catch on it will be Viano. Retreating back to first base is Cole Yancey out number two. The hit and run ends up working as contact was made in fair territory. However, it was a fly ball. It'll bring up Caden Cardoso. Cardoso today, two for three, walked doubled, hit a home run, and flew out to right. He has five RBIs on the day. And with under two to go in the Stanley Cup semifinals, the New York Islanders have pulled the goalie. A line drive hit the right field, making the catch on it. However, 
is the right fielder in Fogelstrom, which will end the inning for the Trappers. We head to the eighth, a 7-5 lead for Pierre. Due up for the Whiskey Jacks is the 3-4-5 in McDowell, Viano, and Stein. We'll be back here on the Pierre Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams. When it comes to clothing in the Capital Area, Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry have you covered. Speedway Laundry offers the fastest way to clean clothes, with free Wi-Fi offered while you wait. Next door, family-owned and operated Total Beauty has a constantly changing inventory of top quality clothing. Check out the newest lines in clothing by giving Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry a visit at 111 First Street in Fort Pier. In times like these, it's good to know there's a place where people know who you are, no matter how long you've been gone. A place where the smells of home cooking are still in the air, where a simple wave warms your heart, and sharing stories with family, friends, and your community is just a way of life. Yes, in times like these, it's good to be home. Farmers Union Insurance, protecting what's important in life. Back here for the eighth inning, Brent Bramlett returns for his second inning of work. A few more sponsors we'd like to thank for the 2021 Pier Trappers baseball season, including Papa Murphy's Pizza, Right Turn with Christians and Farms, it's the South Dakota Treasurer's Office, Shane's Pharmacy, Todd's Electric, and Zesto. Thank you for your continued support of Pier Trappers baseball. We have a final score from Tampa Bay. The Tampa Bay Lightning return to the Stanley Cup Finals for their second straight season, defeating the Islanders in Game 7, one to nothing. So it's a battle of North versus South in the Stanley Cup Finals as the first pitch from Bramlett is swung on and missed by McDowell for strike number one. The Montreal Canadiens take on the Floridian Tampa Bay Lightning. A battle of old school versus new school, traditionalist versus the Floridians. Oh, oh one swung on and missed for strike number two. Bramlett has been dealing so far today. Another pitch misses low, 1-2. Take a look at around the Expedition League. A 9-6 lead for the Big Sticks over the Tommyknockers, bottom eight in Dickinson. Pitch will run inside. Hitting McDowell, he'll take the jog up to first. So the first base runner allowed by Bramlett will be on the hit by pitch. It brings up Owen Viano. He is one for two today, was hit by a pitch in the first, grounded out to third in the fourth, singled coming around a score in the sixth. Pitch will be fouled off, heading into the crowd. Puts the count to 0 and 1. We appreciate those of you sticking with us and making us a part of your Friday night as the Whiskey Jacks take on the Pier Trappers in game one of a three-game weekend series from Hyde Stadium. And 0-1 from Bramlett to Viano. Viano, the native of Boise, Idaho. So two Idaho natives facing off. The 0-1 will miss inside, even the count at 1-1. One one. Runner at first for the Whiskey Jacks. Pitch will run high and inside, nearly grazing another Jack's shoulder. 
will run the count to two and one. It would have been the second consecutive hit by pitch and forced a runner into scoring position. Tying run is at the plate for Wheat City. Two balls, one strike. Ground ball over to third, picking it up is Cordes. Cordes will fire onto first for the out. In time, a 5-3 ground out. So Viano is out. It records the first out of the inning. However, McDowell will advance to second base and the Whiskey Jacks have a runner in scoring position. Wheat City trying to claw their way back into this ball game. It will be Rhett Stein. Stein today, one for three, struck out looking in the first, grounded out to third in the fourth, singled coming around to score in the sixth. Stein against Bramlett, first time they're facing off. Pitch to Stein will run inside for ball one. Stein, the native of Auburn, Washington. Attends Biola University, playing for the Eagles, just finished his freshman year. So a 1-0 count, the pitch will go low, 2-0. Runner is in scoring position, tying run is at the plate. For the Whiskey Jacks, worth mentioning that their go-ahead run is represented by Nolan Lingley in the on-deck circle. Two balls and no strikes. Bramlett steps off the rubber as McDowell will retreat back to second base. Texas has scored another in the seventh inning. It's now 5-2 to two Longhorns over the Mississippi State Bulldogs. 2-0, check swing, but it will be called a strike anyway on the inside part of the plate. Count will run to two balls and one strike. So now a 2-1, Bramlett. Toes the rubber once more. Runner at second for the Whiskey Jacks. Check swing, but that one will be a called strike. Count will run even to two and two. So a 2-2. Bramlett looking for his third strikeout of his appearance. He's in his second inning of work after a 1-2-3 two, seventh. 2-2 two, two on the way, ground ball will get through the middle infield, getting between Staus and Connor, rounding third and coming home as McDowell, the throw home will be cut off. A run scores for the Whiskey Jacks, it's now a one run ball game. Seven to six, the new score. Stein with the base hit. It's his second base hit of the ball game. And it brings up Nolan Lingley. So Lingley will be the new batter. He is 0 for 1 today. Struck out, hit by a pitch, and walked. First pitch will be grounded foul up the first baseline for strike one. Now an 0-1 count, Stein stands at first. He represents the tying run, go ahead run at the plate for the Whiskey Jacks. Pitch will miss low, one ball, one strike. Count remains at one and one. 
swung on and fouled back. A nice play by the on-deck batter, Dylan McKee, barehanding the foul ball. Count will run to one and two. So one ball, two strikes. Runner at first for the Whiskey Jacks in a one-run ball game. Pitch outside. Count will run even. Two balls, two strikes. So a 2-2 action going in both bullpens. A 2-2 ground ball over to third. Picking it up is Connor, the shortstop, who can't hold on to the baseball. Everybody will be safe for the Whiskey Jacks, and now the go-ahead run is aboard. It will be a base hit for Nolan Lingley. Still only one away in the inning with two runners aboard. It will bring up Dylan McKee. So now McKee steps in, who's one for three today. Pitch will go high for ball one. Runners on first and second for Wheat City. One ball, no strikes. Brent Bramlett trying to escape the jam, only one out. Fly ball. Into center field, chasing after it is Mass. Mass will reach up to make the catch, and that's a big out for the Pier Trappers. Thought for a second it might drop in front of the Trappers center fielder, but reaching up to make the catch for out number two. So it will bring up Houston Fogelstrom, who is 0 for, 1 for 3 today, including a three-run home run. So first and second for Fogelstrom in the first pitch. By Bramlett, it will be a check swing. They'll appeal. No swing. One ball, no strikes. So runners at first and second, Lingley at first, Stein at second. The batter is Fogelstrom. Swing and a miss will even the count at one and one. So a 1-1 count to Fogelstrom. Bramlett trying to escape the inning. One run has crossed, that's for certain. It's seven to six, Trappers. The pitch runs inside, two balls and one strike. There is action in the Trappers bullpen. It's Tyler Lubin and Jacob Newman. Newman getting his debut two days ago in Sioux Falls as a pitcher. Two, one goes low. Three balls, one strike, and now a hitter's count for Houston Fogelstrom with Cameron Daigle standing on deck. Could come up in a big bases loaded situation if Fogelstrom draws the walk. So three and one, Bramlett stares into the catcher. Checks over at the runner at second and Stein. Fires and a pitch catches the strike zone. We are full, three balls and two strikes. 
Bramlett, a strike away from getting out of the inning and stopping the Whiskey Jacks from tying the ball game or taking the lead. And really the definition of a payoff pitch on the way from Brent Bramlett. The pitch will run inside, that's ball four. The bases will go loaded for Cameron Daigle. First walk surrendered by Bramlett as Lingley advances to second base. Stein gets to third. It will be up to Cameron Daigle. Now Monterio May will call time and have a meeting with his pitcher. A very tight ball game. The tension is high here at Hyde Stadium. Trappers seven, Whiskey Jack six. Whiskey Jacks have the bases loaded for Cameron Daigle, their center fielder. Only silver lining for the Trappers is that Cameron Daigle is 0 for 3 today. Popped out to third, struck out twice. He came into today's game with a batting average of 194. So statistically due either in this at bat or his next one. Bramlett gets a few words of encouragement as May retreats back to the Trapper's dugout. And it's up to Cameron Daigle to drive in at least a game tying run for Wheat City. Bramlett hides his face in his glove, kicks and fires on a pitch low for ball one. It now takes three balls to score a run and three strikes for the Trappers to get out of the inning. one is Bramlett. Kicks and fires on a pitch low and outside, ball two. Bramlett pitched a 1-2-3 perfect inning in the seventh. It has been very different here in the eighth. The 2-0 line drive, hit right to the second baseman. Ty Strauss spears the ball before it goes to right field. The Pier Trappers somehow get out of the inning. Strauss comes up with a huge catch in only his second game in a Trappers uniform. As we head to the bottom of the eighth, it's the Trappers seven and the Whiskey Jack six will be back. Bottom of the eighth, Trappers Try to add a desperate need for some insurance with Connor, Mast, and Bramante due up when we come back. Hey, it's the old top Gator here with Gators. Pizza, pasta, subs, and the North Ridge Plaza. Gators is known for top quality food. Now you can have our food selections delivered right to your front door using DoorDash. That's right. Now you have four ways that you can get great Gators food. Dine-in, carry-out, curbside pickup, and now delivery through DoorDash. Gators has been serving the Pier area and now Trappers baseball fans since 1987. Gators, Pizza Pasta Subs in the Northridge Plaza. Dan O's Marine is a proud partner of Pier Trappers Baseball. Located at 320 St. Charles Street, Dan O's provides service on your boat to get you back out on the water in the dog days of summer. Give them a call at 605-224-6612. That's Dan O's Marine at 605-224-6612. Any water, any problem, Dano's Marine. Back for the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher for the Whiskey Jacks. Before we get you caught up on his stats, a few more sponsors of the 2021 Pier Trappers baseball season. We'd like to say thank you to, including Larry at Lanes, Leisure Palace, the Pier Area Chamber of Commerce, Red Rosa, Slumberland, and the Paint Store too. Thanks for your continued support of Pier Trappers Baseball. New pitcher for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks in Jackson Harbin. Harbin, a Carson Newman University Eagle, calls Gastonia, North Carolina his hometown. 
The freshman is a right-handed pitcher in four appearances, one start does not have a record with a 5.19 ERA in eight and two thirds innings pitch has allowed seven base hits, six runs, five earned, 12 walks and seven strikeouts. First pitch to the leadoff batter of the inning, Patrick Connor will miss for a ball. Harbin's last appearance on June 20th against the Sioux Falls Sunfish pitched one inning, no hits, no runs, walked two, did not secure a strikeout. Pitch will catch off the catcher's glove in Stein. Two balls and no strikes. Stein will now come out to talk to Harbin. Take a look at the final line for the previous Whiskey Jack pitcher in Will Hlady's line. Hlady had two innings pitched. Allowed one hit. No runs. Walked one. Did not secure a K. Two balls, no strikes to Patrick Connor. Harbin with the 2-0, a high pitch will run the count to three balls and no strikes. Majority of the crowd has stayed the course of the ball game and a majority of the crowd, children of the capital area. 3-0 will go high in the first batter that Harbin faces is a four pitch walk. So Connor gets aboard the Trappers, trying to secure some insurance runs against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks before they head into the top of the ninth. It'll bring up Eric Mass. Mass today is one for three. Mass singled back in the first. Excuse me. Mass today is two for four. I was reading the wrong line. Pitch will go low, one ball, no strikes. Mass today flew out to left in the first, singled in the second, hit a double in the fourth, later coming around to score, and flew out to center in the sixth. one -oh on the fire inside. We'll catch the strike zone and even the count to Eric Mast at one and one. And one of the other great things about summer ball is you get to see appearances that you normally wouldn't get to see. Pitcher batter matchups that wouldn't take place until either both players made it to minor league baseball or some other way, pitch will miss again, two balls, one strike. So now you have a Carson Newman University Eagle who calls Gastonia, North Carolina his hometown against a Big Bend Community College Viking who calls Spokane, Washington his hometown. West Coast versus East Coast. 2-1 as a pitch will go low, three balls and one strike. As so far in this appearance, Harbin has been struggling with control. This has turned into a very entertaining game as the Whiskey Jacks have continued to continuously chip away at the Trapper lead. Pitch will run high and inside, and that's two consecutive walks surrendered by Jackson Harbin. So runners now at first and second for Pier. It will bring up Joey Bramante, who's 0 for 2 today. Time will be called as the head coach of the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. In Robbie Laughlin will come to talk to his pitcher. There is no action currently in the Whiskey Jack bullpen. Update from Omaha, Texas and Mississippi State. Now in the eighth inning, Texas batting top eight. And we're just about at a final score in Milwaukee with seven tenths of a second left. And there it goes. Final score from Milwaukee. The Bucks 125, the Hawks 91. The Bucks have now evened the series at one apiece. They will go to the State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia for games three and four. Quick talk on the mound is that we'll bring up Joey Bramante. Bramante 
has two pair, two strikeout swingings, and two hit by pitches. Nobody out, bottom of the eighth. A wind up and pitch on the first pitch, high and inside for ball one. And so after the long mound visit and the two consecutive walks, a ball to Joey Bramante, still no action in the Whiskey Jack bullpen. 1-0 goes low, two balls and no strikes. And so you have to expect as a team the red light is on after two consecutive walks and a 2-0 count to Bramante. Two zero pitch. That one goes high for Bramante. Three zero. And Harbin, making it seem like there is an invisible force field in the strike zone. Three zero is a pitch will run inside, but that one catches strike zone for strike number one. Still barely catching the plate. Three and one. The three balls, one strike, two on for the Trappers. A swing and a miss by Bramante for strike number two. Obviously frustrated with himself after the swing and miss. Count will run full. Still nobody out. Ty Staus on deck. Three, two, the pitch from Harbin. Swung on, fouled off. That will head into the crowd. Count remains 3-2. We'll do the payoff pitch once more. Has been a clean game so far from both sides. Pitch will go high. That's ball four. So a full count walk to Joey Bramante. Third walk surrendered, and now there is action going in the Wheat City bullpen. Mast will advance to second base. Connor gets the third. The bases are loaded for Ty Staus. And what a moment this would be for your first base hit as a member of the Pier Trappers. Ty Staus making the lead saving play at second base in the top half of this inning. Now could make a play in the bottom half. First pitch goes high for ball one. So a 1-0 count. Bases are juiced for the Pier Trappers. The 1-0, that one goes high. Two balls and no strikes. Harbin continues to struggle through this appearance. 7-6, to six, Pier leading the Whis Whiskey Jacks, bottom of the eighth. Trapper's trying to add some insurance. Two zero. -oh, that one goes high. So now a 3-0 count to Ty Staus. Staus today is 0-for-1, two walks, a sacrifice fly. His lone at bat was all the way back in the first inning when he struck out. The 3-0 pitch, that one goes high and outside. That's ball four. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there as an insurance run crosses home. So a walk will get a run home for the Pier Trappers. Still nobody out in the inning. Fourth straight walk, it goes to Ty Staus, advancing to second is Joey Bramante. Mast gets to third and Connor gets home. It brings up Nick Strong, strong today, one for four. First pitch will go low, ball one. With the run scoring via the walk, it is now eight to six, Pier. One 
1-0 wind up. Fly ball into center field. That drops for a base hit. Coming in to score is Eric Mass. The Trappers play station to station. It's now 6-9. And now time will be called. Here comes the head coach of the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, Robbie Laughlin. This is the second of the inning, which means Jackson Harbin's night is over. The Trappers have driven him from this ball game. The Knicks strong base hit pushes Staus to second, Bramante to third, pushes Mast into score. It's a two spot here in the bottom of the eighth. So that will be it for Jackson Harbin. New pitcher coming in for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. We'll get you caught up on his information when we come back on the Pure Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams. Dan O's Marine is a proud partner of Pure Trappers Baseball. Located at 320 St. Charles Street, Dan O's provides service on your boat to get you back out on the water in the dog days of summer. Give them a call at 605-224-6612. That's Dano's Marine at 605-224-6612. Any water, any problem, Dano's Marine. The Governor's Inn is the exclusive motel partner of the Pier Trappers. Check out the special Trappers rate for your visit to Pier and Hyde Stadium this summer. Call 605-224-4200 directly to get the Trappers rate. With free wireless internet, a deluxe breakfast, and an indoor pool and hot tub, there's no reason not to stop at the Governor's Inn. Back here on the Pier Trappers Mixler lives and YouTube live streams, a new pitcher for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks is number two in Brandon Nix. Nix wears number two this season for the Whiskey Jacks. Nix, a Northeast Community College Hawk out of Omaha, Nebraska, and six appearances and one start, does not have a record with an 11.45 ERA and 11 innings pitched, has allowed 17 base hits, 18 runs, 14 of them earned, 16 walks and three strikeouts, a very high walk to strikeout ratio. Nix scouting report on Brandon Nix mostly favors the fastball and the curveball. He will have to take on Brock Reinhardt, Cole Yancey, and Braden Cordes, considering or assuming that there will not be a double play. Bases remain loaded for the Trappers for Brock Reinhardt. Reinhardt's been having himself a day. He is two for three. So Reinhardt steps in. Strong at first, Staus at second, Bramante at third. The first pitch will go on the outside part of the plate, but that catches strike zone for strike number one. So Brandon Nix start things off with a strike looking. All three runners on the Bates pass, responsibility of Jackson Harbin. So the 0-1, a wind up and pitch will go high above the strike zone. We'll even the count at one and one. Still nobody out in the bottom of the eighth. Middle infield is playing in. And the entire infield is in. So the 1-1 swung on and missed for strike number two. Bases remain loaded for Pier. Brock Reinhardt looking for his third base hit of the ball game. And his first RBI. One and two, swung on and missed. It was a half-hearted attempt by Reinhardt, but he'll go down swinging. Out number one of the inning on the first batter that Knicks faces. Oh, 
It will bring up Cole Yancey. Yancey today is one for four, grounded out to third, struck out swinging, popped out in foul territory to the third base side, and singled in that order. First pitch to Yancey, a fastball high for ball one. No gun here at Hyde Stadium, but hearing from the scouting report, 76 to 79 mile per hour fastballs from Knicks. Pitch will go outside, a curveball for ball two. Curveball slows things down in the low 60s. Pitch will go outside, and after a punch out to Brock Reinhardt, Cole Yancey starts out his at bat with a 3 0 count. Braden Cordes stands on deck, barring a double play hit into by Cole Yancey. 3-0 will catch the strike zone at the top right at the letters for strike one. A hitter's count now to Cole Yancey, 3-1. and one. one of the longer games the Trappers have played in now over the three-hour mark. Pitch will catch the strike zone. Yancey takes a long look at the spot. And the count will run full, 3-2. Payoff pitch coming from Brandon Nix. Will wind up and pitch a swing and a miss. Two straight strikeouts. Yancey walks back to the dugout. Two away as it brings up Braden Cordes. It's been an excellent appearance for Brandon Nix so far. Inherited a bases loaded situation with nobody out. Two straight strikeouts. And he may get out of the inning and stop the bleeding for the Whiskey Jacks at just two runs. Pitch will go high and outside for a ball. So Cordes, with a 1-0 count, will take a pitch outside 2-0. So two balls, no strikes to Braden Cordes. Strong at first, Staus at second, Bramante at third. 2-0 will go high, and now a 3-0 count to Braden Cordes. Knicks may walk home a run. So a 3-0 count with two away. Pitch will go high. That one will be called a strike at the letters. Top of the ninth inning and the final chance for the Whiskey Jacks will have the top of the order in Bittner, Sitzman, and McDowell. 3-1, swung on and missed. 3-2, and now with a full count, Nix has a chance to strike out the side. With a full count and two away, every single base runner will be moving as soon as Nix fires his leg. Payoff pitch. All runners go and it's fouled off. Everyone will have to travel the 90 feet backwards. Good attendance of night of 620 at the peak time here at Hyde Stadium. Payoff pitch goes high. That's ball four, and the Trappers have put up double digits 
here in the opener of the Whiskey Jack series. 10 to six, the new score. Strong will advance to second base. Staus advances to third. Coming home is Joey Bramante. So a 3-0 count goes for a ball to drive home, or a 3-2 count goes for a ball as Cordis walks. It will bring up Caden Cardoso. First pitch to Cardoso will go outside for a ball. Trappers have put up double digits for the first time since two days ago when the Trappers put up 11 against the Sunfish. 1-0 swung on and missed by Cardoso for strike one. Cardoso, the final batter to bat this inning. If he gets aboard, the Trappers will bring up Patrick Connor, who's already come up to bat this inning. Pitch will be taken on the outside part of the plate for a 1-2, a similar situation to ours in Omaha. With the bases loaded in the bottom of the eighth, However, Mississippi State down by three and has a chance to come back. The Trappers just trying to add some more insurance. Bases loaded, Cardoso with a one-two count. Will check swing on a called strike number three. Cardoso looks back, can't believe it. We'll have a couple words with Alex Shoemaker, the home plate umpire, before retreating back to the dugout. It will be 10-6, to six. Trappers heading into the ninth. They have four runs to work with to stop the Whiskey Jacks and take the series opener here on this Friday evening from Pier, South Dakota. We'll be back for the ninth on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler channels. When it comes to clothing in the Capital Area, Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry have you covered. Speedway Laundry offers the fastest way to clean clothes with free Wi-Fi offered while you wait. Next door, family owned and operated Total Beauty has a constantly changing inventory of top quality clothing. Check out the newest lines in clothing by giving Total Beauty and Speedway Laundry a visit at 111 First Street in Fort Pier. Top of the ninth inning. Here from Pierce, South Dakota, still nobody on the pitcher's mound. There might still be a decision about who is coming in, and it is going to be Tyler Lubin, the sidearm pitcher for the Pier Trappers, coming in to slam the door. A couple more sponsors we'd like to say thank you to before we get underway here in the top of the ninth, including Smith Fireworks, Stella Rosa Wine, Total Beauty Speedway Laundry, United Way Delta Dental, Wheelhouse Plumbing, and Xander Auto Parts. Thanks for your continued support of Pier Trappers Baseball. New pitcher for the Trappers is Tyler Lubin. Lubin last appeared three games ago back on June 22nd. Pitched in one inning, allowed one hit. It was a scoreless inning. Did not get a decision. He enters with a 2-0 record, one save. With a four-run lead, this will not be a save situation for Tyler Lubin. So Lubin will have to take on the top of the batting order for the Whiskey Jacks. Another update from Omaha, keeping you up to date on that. The Texas Longhorns have walked in a run and relieved their pitcher. It's now a 5-3 Longhorn lead in the bottom of the eighth. We're here in the top of the ninth. On the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler live streams.
So it will be Dean Bittner, who is 0 for 4. Then Ethan Sitzman, who's 2 for 4. And Caleb McDowell, who's 0 for 3. So a combined one hit through the entire Whiskey Jacks order that is due up. 10 to 6, Trappers lead. They have four runs to work with to hold off the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. So leading things off will be Dean Bittner against Tyler Lubin. Quick words from Nick Strong, the catcher to Lubin. Lubin, the third pitcher of the game for the Pier Trappers. We'll take a look at Brent Bramlett's final line. Lubin steps up to shut the door. Bramlett in two innings allowed two base hits, one run it was earned, walked one, striking out two. First pitch from the side armor, Lubin will miss for ball one. Trappers trying to win game one of this three game series. Foul ball will head back into the screen for strike number one. Evens the count at one and one. So one ball and one strike. The sidearm pitch from Lubin will be fouled back, heading back towards us, and it will drop just in front into the seats. The count will go to one and two. So one ball, two strikes now to Bittner. Nobody out in the top of the ninth. The one to the sidearm pitch, swung on and missed. Out number one on the strikeout by Tyler Lubin. Dean Bittner gets a hat trick of strikeouts as he goes 0 for 5 on the night. So it'll bring up Ethan Sitzman. Sitzman today, 2 for 4. Sitzman singled in the first and third, grounded out in the fifth, struck out swinging in the seventh. First pitch will run inside, ball one. Lubin doesn't have too much velocity on his arm. However, that sidearm action does confuse a few batters. Trapper's two outs away from taking the series opener. Another pitch will miss, 2-0. On deck is Caleb McDowell. Pitch will catch the outside part of the plate. Count will run to two and one. An unbelievable sequence of events in Omaha. The Mississippi State Bulldogs have now tied the ball game with the Texas Longhorns. Fly ball hit to right field. Underneath it is Cardoso chasing after it. Diving can't make the play. Rounding first and heading for second base is Ethan Sitzman and a runner in scoring position for Wheat City. So a one-out double for Sitzman. He's had a great day against the Trappers. He's three for five. So it'll bring up Caleb McDowell with a runner in scoring position. That now puts the tying run in the hole, represented by Rhett Stein, the catcher. Top of the ninth, one away, Trappers 10, Whiskey Jack 6. Pitch from Lubin will catch the strike zone, no balls, one strike. A 
a Cumbus single to right center field. Knocks in two for the Bulldogs. We're tied at five, bottom eight. Mississippi State wins. The Longhorns are eliminated. Ground ball to third. Cordes will pick it up. Fires onto first. Scoops it out as Bramante. What a play by Bramante to get the ball from the dirt. Two away. And the Whiskey Jacks now down to their final out. Runner stays at second base in Caleb McDowell. Cheers from the home supporters here at Hyde Stadium as it brings up Owen Viano. Viano today one for three, reached twice with a hit by pitch and a single. Fly ball to right field, Cardoso underneath it, reaches up and makes the catch. And the Pier Trappers victorious at home by a final score of 10 to six. Trappers dugout will spill out the spread. Congratulations. It has been a long time since the Trappers have gotten a victory at their home ballpark. June 7th, the last time the fans have gotten to celebrate a victory at Hyde Stadium. They'll do it once more here on June 25th. Final score, Pier 10, Wheat City 6. We'll take a short break and be back for the Pier Trappers post-game show here on the Pier Trappers YouTube and Mixler channels. We'll be right back. In times like these, it's good to know there's a place where people know who you are, no matter how long you've been gone. A place where the smells of home cooking are still in the air, where a simple wave warms your heart, and sharing stories with family, friends, and your community is just a way of life. Yes, in times like these, it's good to be home. Farmers Union Insurance, protecting what's important in life. You don't need an illness to need a doctor. You don't need to feel sick to feel better. You don't need to be unwell to get well. What you do need is a primary care provider at Sanford Health. Better health care starts with regular wellness visits and a familiar face who knows you, your concerns, and your goals. We're here before you need us. We're here when you need us. We're here after you need us. We're here for you. Find your primary care provider at SanfordHealth.org today. Back here on the Pier Trappers post-game show, the Trappers victorious over the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, 10 to six here from Hyde Stadium in game one of a three-game weekend series against the Whiskey Jacks. Final line score for the Whiskey Jacks, six runs on nine hits, no errors. They left six runners on base for the Trappers. 10 runs on 10 hits, no errors. They left 12 on base. Winning pitcher getting his first win of the season, and it feels like it's overdue. Ryan Cross, one and three on the season. As starting pitcher for the Whiskey Jacks, and Jake Anderson will get the loss. He falls to one and three with a four-run Lead for the Trappers heading into the ninth inning. No save for Tyler Lubin. We'll take a look at the final team totals, including player of the game. And it seems like a pretty obvious award to give out for the Trappers. Caden Cardoso coming in with five RBIs. He came into today's game with two. So advancing it to eight, he increases his RBI total by 300%. Cardoso, the player of the game in this 10 to six victory over the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Taking a look at the final lines for pitchers, Ryan Cross had pitched in six innings, allowed six hits, five runs, all of them earned. Brent Bramlett came in relief. He pitched two innings, allowed two hits, one run. It was earned. Walked one, struck out two. Tyler Lubin came in to slam the door, pitched one inning, allowed one base hit. No runs. Did not walk a batter and struck out one. 
So the Trappers pitching staff allowed nine hits in nine innings, six runs, all of them earned. Only walk two, which feels like a season record, and I'm 99% sure it is a season record for the Trappers. For least amount of batters walked, they struck out 10. Meanwhile, for Wheat City, their starting pitcher, Jake Anderson, only went two innings. Allowed four hits, four runs. They were both earned. Walked five, struck out three. Their relief pitcher in Dylan Cooster pitched three innings, four hits, three runs. All of them earned. Did not walk a batter. Struck out four. Then it was Will Hlady who pitched in two innings. Allowed one hit, no runs. Walked one, did not strike out one. It was a bad day for Jackson Harbin. Did not record an out, allowed one hit, three runs, all of them earned, walked four, did not strike out a batter. And finally, Brandon Nix pitched in one inning, allowed no hits or runs, walked one, and struck out three. Final game totals for the Whiskey Jacks pitching staff. They struck out 10 batters, ended up walking 11, allowed 10 runs, all of them earned in the process, allowing 10 hits and eight innings pitched. So one more time, the final score, the Pier Trappers 10 in the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks 6. Ryan Cross gets the win, advancing to 1-3 and three on the year. Jake Anderson will get the loss, falling to 1-3 and three on the season with a game start time of 7 o'clock on the dot and a final out recorded at 10-18. That goes for a game time of 3 hours and 18 minutes. One more time, your final score, the Pier Trappers 10 in the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks 6. Be sure to tune in tomorrow on either the Pier Trappers YouTube or Mixler channels. First pitch scheduled for 7.05 between the, between the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks and the Pier Trappers. 10 to six, your final here from Pier, South Dakota.